<laughs> no, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks. Well, welcome to episode 39 of the Off Center Archers. I'm Anthony. Hey, it's. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I wasn't ready. Wait, hold on. <clears throat> Reset. Welcome to. <laughs> I can't even say it. Fucking Christ. I should just delete this right now. No, why? No, 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 no. As long as there's one person out there getting a little chuckle. That's fine. I don't give a shit about anyone else. Okay. We just got that one person. All right. Well, this week, we, we really don't have anything planned really to talk about too much. Okay. There's get... a couple of things that Steph's been tossing around. <laughs> so I no, say first nothing. of all, let me just say, we never actually plan any of our podcasts. No, no. This is more off the cuff than anything. We never really have like a, a setup. We never really write anything down. We kind of just go with it. But we say, hey, in general terms, what do you want to talk about? They're like, right. yeah, this, this, and this. But we have, we have absolutely nothing. I realized that, um, oh, that sounds a lot better. Yeah, it does. That's what happens when you talk access to, to the microphone. Access? Where it's supposed to be. Yeah, off, like off axis over here sounds like dog shit. Over here sounds great. Why don't you just say just in front of it? Okay. Why do you guys have to start using these words like, oh, it's off axis. No, okay. blah, blah, blah. Get, get to what the whole <laughs> topics are. <laughs> Um, so we realized that this week, so the week prior, we, uh, we had our spring, not spring break or our our son had had, spring break. Yeah. So our time was kind of limited as far as, uh, our normal scheduling, which is no, it's no excuse because we could still bring him, we could bring the whole family to the range, which we've done before. Mm -hmm. They just got away on us. And, um, this week, I don't know what the hell happened. Like. Life really came came by, took a, a swift roundhouse kick to the face, and then left. And we went shooting one day. Right. So I I I don't even know what the hell what the hell happened. I mean, it was Monday, and we're like, okay, we're gonna go shooting all week, and it's Friday. Yeah, I mean, we're only able to go once. Yeah, I don't. I I have actually no idea. Well, I mailed out um, on a side note before I actually forget, and then when we stop recording, I'm like, ah, shit. So, for my self promotion done early. Yeah, well, not kind of. It's sort of self, not really. Okay, so for my um, because I make the bow slings on Mm -hmm. the side. Is just a little hobby of mine. Yes. And I sell them on Etsy. So it's shootingskulls.etsy.com. And um, I had, if any of you follow me on, on Instagram, I, I put up that I actually shipped one um, over to Australia. I think mm-hmm. it was it was during the week. Yes. It was Wednesday or Thursday? Something like Thursday, that. Thursday. Thursday. And um, I have to say, you know, this is the first time that I'm actually sending something overseas. I've never actually sent it overseas and realized, like, the extra forms you have to fill out for this shit. It was as if I was like shipping some some sensitive material that you know if it was handled wrong it was gonna like explode or some shit like that, and uh, I sent it and you know I'm finally realizing that the reason it takes so long like two weeks to to get there is because I'm watching the tracking and it went from us to Greenville like there are the main hub for South Carolina which is normal right and then it goes down to uh, it goes over to Columbia, mm-hmm. and then it has a little jog down to Miami, and then they marked it as going from Miami to like Honolulu, Honolulu and then back. But from Honolulu, it was to Miami. It was a total trip of uh, thirty-five minutes, which I must they must have like super jets flying. Or, well, or the time does shit. get earlier on its way out there because of the time zones. Hmm. Yeah, but it would still take longer than the time zone. Like difference. a flight from here to California is five hours and change. But when you get to California, it's only really like an hour and a half after you left here. I know, but I don't think it'd be a half hour difference. Oh, no, no, I know. 35. It would probably be much longer. From than scan that. to scan, even. I think even a flight from California to Hawaii is like five hours. Mm. Either way, even when they scan it, boop. In Honolulu, and it goes all the way to Miami. You know the time zone difference when they go, boop, it got here. Uh, I don't think it's 35 minutes. So I don't know what the hell they're doing. And then went from Miami to Louisburg or no, Louisville, Louis- Kentucky. Louis- Louisville. So who the hell knows what's going on? I mean, I filled out all the paperwork right, so I don't see it coming back to us. 
but it probably takes so long because instead of just going directly to Louisville, mm-hmm. they're like, hey, we're going to do a trip around the world. No, I'm a retard. We're going to do a trip around the U.S. before we go anywhere overseas. Just right. sightsee a little bit. You know? Well, to me, it would make no sense to go from here, first off, to, to Columbia. No, because here it would Greenville, make more sense to go from heat. Well, fine. Greenville is the, the, major the main hub, hub for okay, here. Yeah, yeah. But if it's going, if they're going to send it west to go towards Australia anyway, why not just send it to Knoxville's hub and not send it to Columbia? Is it? That's what makes no sense. There's that no is honestly probably why when you just send it first class, like I didn't send it priority. I didn't send it express or anything like that. I just wanted to see what the cheapest way with the average time mm-hmm. was. And that is probably why they say at least because I mean I think uh, priority where it's express and there's another stage up and then there's my stage that I went which is um, unknown delivery time right and the one below me which was like fifteen dollars more gave a six to ten day window right so you know damn well that's probably gonna take two weeks because they're like just tossing it around yeah how long is it gonna take two, two weeks. weeks. <laughs> If anyone doesn't know where that's from, it, it, go watch the, the Money, Money Pit, Pit with Tom Hanks. It's like 1980 something. Eight. When Tom Hanks was like young 80, and eighty eight or eighty seven or something like that. Pre uh no. pro- professional photo bombing Tom Hanks that he is now. Or maybe it was early eighties. He, he jumps in people's weddings photos as he's jogging through Central Park now. Listen, if he jumped in our wedding photo, I don't give a shit. Oh, he you can, know, I think he's funny. He I can think he's, come just, when reception. he does that type of stuff, he's hysterical. But. So that's uh, kind of I'm I'm tracking it as as a curiosity to see what goes on with this, mm-hmm. and that is why it takes and I've seen a long time because they're they're doing things they don't need to be doing. If they probably sent things to where they're supposed to go from A to B instead of going like all over the friggin' place, right? They'd probably get there faster. Yeah, and it'd probably waste less time because less hands are touching it. So let's yeah, work. but there's always some sort of algorithm that does all the programming of where the shit goes. Because every package where you give in obviously gets a barcode, and the computer says, "Okay, this one's got to go here to make this, this, and that, and blah, blah, blah." And I guess if they only had two planes leaving, and that was the other plane that happened to be leaving, because another plane's leving from there right. to somewhere. I don't mm-hmm. fucking know. Who knows? If you it'll it'll the... get there. So listen, if you work for the post office and you have a clue about how this works, leave us a comment. Enlighten me a little bit. I work for a shipping company, and these fuckers don't know how that shit works the right way. You're different. Don't even say it, because we're going to have to go back and... uh, Scratch that. You're going to have to go back and edit that. (laughs) (laughs) And do our bleeps. Our whole bleeping episode again. Yeah, that is true. So, um, (laughs) all right, so now that you got your your international Yes, so... Actually, and also this week was the most slings you've sold in a week. Yeah, I slung my slings this week. You weekend. slung your slings. Yeah. That just sounds like a dick joke coming. But anyway. Wait, you got to pause to let people mm-hmm. mull over that in their head. Yeah, slinging the slings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so I decided to uh, be able to ship all my stuff internationally. So I'm kind of like just waiting for that first order that comes in that's over, not in the U.S. or Canada. Right. Or uh, let me just say anything actually connected to us that I have to go over water with. Right. Well, anything out of the lower 48s can be considered international. Even half the, I think even Hawaii and Alaska technically are, are international shipping in a lot of cases. Yeah. Yeah. But they're free too. So I might, I might lose that on those. Well, yeah, well, that is what it is. If you're a U.S. citizen, I'll give you free shipping. There you go. But you Thanks. can't be vacationing in like Russia or something because that doesn't count vacationing in <laughs> Russia? We're not going to ship it to someone who's vacationing, or you're not going to ship it. Well, if they had family over there, and like, hey, yo, ship it to my family's house here in Moscow. And I don't know why it would sound like that in Moscow. So it was a bunch same. of Italians yeah, visiting. Yeah, just a bunch of guineas in fucking Moscow? Yeah. And yes, I could say that. I'm fucking Italian. I don't care. Hey. Hey, hey yo. Hey, paisan. Oh, uh, Jesus Christ. How, so, you, how would a Russian say paisan? I'm going to ask Duck. He would... Probably had to say that. <laughs> no, I don't know. You know, what? with all the people I'm meeting from Russia, you know, I tried learning German, and I'm starting to realize that I'm, I'm meeting more people from Russia. I don't know how this is happening, but I'm getting more comments uh, from my store in in Russian. They're they're talking to me in Russian, like I actually am fluent. I don't know how this is working out, but <clears throat> and I'm meeting more people that are happen to be from Russia and speak Russian. So it would only make sense now 
that I should maybe try learning Russian because I actually have people to conversate yeah, with. That's it. Go from an, a, a, a language that sounds angry as shit when they normally talk to each other to an, a language that sounds like they always want to fight each other. I don't know. Uh, Germans always sound angry as shit when they talk to each other. And I think Russians always sound like they're on the border of just a fight nonstop when they're talking. They could be telling each other that they love each other. Right? Yeah. It's a romantic language. You don't hear it from my end. Romantic. No. Watch John Wick. Anytime one of those motherfuckers talking. Yeah. Russian, yeah. Even that like, horrible Ooh. accent that Kevin Nash did when he played the Russian bodyguard outside the club. You're like, okay, that, that's a horrible accent, but he's a big fucking dude. Actually, we're not one to judge an accent because we're not Russian. And we have never visited or lived in Russia. Right. So we have no. I've worked with guys that were native born Russians. Yeah, but they're over in America, so they don't count anymore. Well, yeah. That's because every time he goes home to visit, he has to jump the country because they immediately want to draft him into the army. Oh, Jesus. That's a whole other thing. Mm. Mm. Anywho. Um, so back to archery of some sort. Of some sort. Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> I know on our little road clips that we've been doing, which I actually really like to do, but the problem with me is I got to sometimes cut myself off because I can actually, especially sometimes when I'm in a mood just to sit and I'm fighting with these podcasts. Sometimes I could just keep on going. I don't care when we're doing nothing. them in the house. No, 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 no. We but I mean, talking, talking, talking. My point house. is, in the road clips, we're short on time. Right, and that seems like a time where you want to talk more. Yeah, like, I don't oh, know. when we record in the house, you're like, okay, good, uh, forty five minutes, I'm good, hour, I'm, I'm good. Really? In the car, and you're just like, fuck, we have to stop. No, there's times in the house <laughs> though. I'm kind of looking at you, and you're giving me that look like. I try, I try to be reasonable with it, and I know everyone, you know. A lot of, you know, if, if we had guests, like when we had Dougie on with us, right. I don't care when we do it in a two hour, two and a half hour podcast. And um, just for everyone's future reference, I'm gonna, I'm in the process of figuring out how to have a Skype phone call go through. And then this way we can do an actual update with Doug himself instead of you hearing shit spew out of my mouth about it. Um, no, why not? Well, why don't you just ask Humbug how he does his? Now, if anyone who hasn't listened to any of our podcasts and you're just tuning in now, <clears throat> which I'll pause, let you go back and listen. Okay, now that you're back, um, we should ask um, Humbug because we go on his show sometimes. Right. And they're in, they're overseas, and they're very long distance, and we have a live feed with them and it, it comes out pretty good like there's yes. not too much delay so our friend is in florida which is a little bit closer a little bit closer yeah just a tad just a oh. little skip oh yeah a little little skip yeah mm -hmm. and uh only like 19 hours less flying eh, whatever no one's counting and um <clears throat> so with him being so much closer if we did the same way the setup is as, as uh, we did with them mm -hmm. then um we could do it just we don't do live feeds yet because Anthony doesn't want to do live feeds yet. So until we get to live feeds, it'd be like a pre-recorded, same same idea. But it wouldn't be a Skype. I think he uses something else. We just got to ask him. So actually, since he'll, he might be listening, um, get a hold of Anthony and give him the <clears throat> lowdown of how to properly set up a podcast with someone out of the house. And it's not just me that doesn't want to do live feeds right now. It's also you. What are you talking about? I keep saying... Not hey, live feeds, do... video feeds. No, I'm talking about... No, no, no. When we do podcasts with him, we're not on video. Okay. Okay. You so gonna you're going to draw two point. images of us so we look cool or something? No, how do we do with... We do the same thing with him. I know, but he has his two goats on his screen. He's got him and the missus on the screen when we do the live feeds with him. And ours has a picture of our off-center archers on the, the screen. That's true. Yeah. Uh, well, whatever. We'll figure it out. But eventually, we're going to start doing video podcasts also. Eventually. But All right. anyway. So we're going to have him on to give get his take. So I know he's also listening, too. So you get a hold of Anthony. It'll probably be in the weekend sometime. You work early Monday. So it'll probably be like a Saturday recording. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, if we do an update with Doug, it'll be on, recorded on a Saturday night. Yeah. And then once we figure out how to do it for that from our end, then we should maybe have some other people, other people on. Yeah, I want to start getting more guests on and stuff. So I know I have I have a couple in mind that I want to get on. Right. Um, that I heard are very responsive to being on shows like that, um, or like ours, I should say. 
Um, so, and then we'll just go from there and just, as long as I can get everything worked out, we'll end up start having other people besides just me and you rattling off. Mm -hmm. Because I want to get like, I don't want to do what everyone else does when we start having guests on. I don't want it to be just like, oh, what was your hunt and what was this and what was that? I, I want it to be more so like what brought you to wanting to shoot your bow? Like me, when I was younger, I started shooting bow. I didn't think about hunting. I didn't think about nothing. Else. I just like shooting. I know. You know. I would. I like the more in person though. That's the problem with me is when you get someone that you don't really, or you talk to the first time. Like say we we get a hold of someone who's a uh, um, who hunts and and whatnot, and uh, we ask, hey, you want to just you know come on for one of our recordings? And they're like, yeah, cool, okay. Mm -hmm. And then we go to record. I don't want it to be like a set up Q and A. I want it to be just our normal BSing that we usually do anyway. Right. But the problem with that is, is that when you don't have someone sitting in front of you, because whether you met them well, for the we'll, first time we'll or you're not. We'll end up seeing them because, I mean, they'll, every, when we go to distribute it, it'll just be audio, but they'll actually physically be on our computer screen. So they'll be able to see us talking to them. It's still not the same as being in person. I know it's Unless not Unless we've talked to someone multiple times before that. Right. And you can get, when you start figuring out how they talk and cues. Right. And um, are we still recording? Yes. Okay. You had that look on you like it just stopped. No, no, no something else. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing an echo because of our walls a little bit. So okay. it's fine. We got to get like noise thingy, pad, stamp, whatever. Yes. And um, it, it's different when um, they're sitting, you know, in front of you. And mm -hmm. you can you can get into that flow of conversation. Well, at least this way, if I could set it up where even it's like a video call, but I don't want it to be where the person is recording over their like cell phone headset. I want the audio to be pretty much decent. Yeah, that's so, the problem. Is that is regular? Well, no, I have an idea of how to do it just from you know being in the group with all the guys that do audio equipment stuff like that. What I'll end up probably doing is we'll end up picking up another USB microphone. Yeah. Not. The Yetis, which we got, we don't have anymore. Um, a smaller one that me and uh, that everyone in the the studio or in the forum or the server, whatever the fuck you want to call it, that they all recommend mm -hmm. that a lot of them use because it's much lighter and it's much more compact. Right. So I can easily send something that's small to them this way, and it, it's live monitoring and it's a USB, so they can plug it right into their computer. Plug their headphones in, but it'll be much better quality audio than it would be if they were just trying to yell into their computer's mm -hmm. microphone or too headphone. Bad. Too bad we couldn't travel. That would be cool. But that'd be creepy. Like, hey, can we come by you and record our podcast? Not creepy. Right. People do that. What's your address? Yeah, well, no, people do that. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I'm serious, though. I mean, you got people, you know, like I would, like, if we were to ever be able to like the, the guys i would obviously try and want to interview are guys that are like kind of like intense like a very upbeat about stuff like all right eric chester from hushin very positive dude you know he's one of the people that everyone says he loves being talked to he loves being on podcasts loves being interviewed and he's yeah. like even in the videos i mean all three of the hushin guys casey brian and eric mm -hmm. all three of them are super positive and like you know very upbeat guys um uh, who's the other person? Like Josh and Sarah Bomar. I would love to talk to Josh because he's probably one of the most intense and he's also fucking enormous. Mm. Um, but he's like that guy. That, like he shoots something and he is like, you, you can see he's so, he's so pumped up about making that good shot. Like the fucking veins in his neck are coming out the vein. He's like so hyped up. You know, his adrenaline's going, the fucking pulse is going. He, you know, he, he, just like these up upbeat people that I want to like interview. Yeah, so like, we'll have to we'll have to figure things out. Well, right. our whole thing is that we figure it out as we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll have to we'll have to see. Um, but I know because mentioning about guests mm -hmm. um, with Doug, and I know we can actually once we get him on, if we can get him on next weekend, I can probably have it done by next weekend. Yeah. Um, and Doug's got a microphone, so which is good, so the the audio will be will be good. Yeah. Um. I know he'll be giving us an update about everything going on. I know he, they just went to Texas. Yes, he just came back from Texas. Did he say that they went hunting at all? Uh, yes, him and his brother did go out. Okay. Um, but by the time they got within yardage of a hog, uh -huh. the hog spotted them and took off. 
Damn. And it's a he said it was a Texas hog. Like the I'm honestly shocked that Doug's brother um the way Doug spoke to, to me about it was Doug had his bow and his brother had his rifle. His, I believe it was an AR or something like that. But he doesn't have any broadheads, does he? I don't know. Maybe maybe his brother does, and he was going to put a broad. I don't know. I, I have no idea. I, Doug's arrow would have killed the deer. I, mean, I know, you know, but would have killed the hog. He would have had to recite a couple things on his bow. For what? Well, if he's practicing without broadheads. Well, if he had a broadhead that was a hundred grain, it would be pretty close. Mm-hmm. Like most likely, it would probably be even like a crappy broadhead might drop an inch and go slightly to the right, depending okay. on well, depending on the helical of his arrow. It, you know, it might just travel that direction a little bit. So, I mean, the, the shot wouldn't have been far off. Like, if he would have aimed mid-ribs mm-hmm. and he shot a broadhead, it would have probably ripped right through the shoulder blade. So, you know, he would have still been able to kill a hog with that without even ever shooting. It. And then especially at, 20, like, 25 to 30 yards or 20 to 30 yards, right. there's not going to be a huge variance in a broadhead. Yeah. Depending on most of them, okay. you know. Like, especially if he were to go, like, you know, he could have went to Walmart and picked up a set of fucking Rage hypodermics or something like that. And since they fold up so damn nicely and then they open on impact, it's a very minimal difference from the broad head to a field tip. Oh, are you talking so, about the mechanicals? Yes. I don't know about the mechanicals. You gotta be careful with the mechanicals. That fucking Rage Extreme looks sexy. God, that cut on contact with that crazy ass set of blades that pop out. Well, Ooh, I'm not even talking about that. Up. Is that I'm talking about... If you have your quiver and you have the the wrong ones that actually are, are I think that's the, the reason I like the cut on contact ones. Though. Because if you got if you're out there if you hit something and you right. it's shoved up in the actual quiver or you well, hit something, I mean, and it sets it off, and that's a that's a, a bitch to have to well, deal with. Well, a lot with of them have move. yeah, like a lot of the rages have rear deploying blades. So if right. you were to shove them into a foam, uh, like the foam insert that's inside the quiver, if you shove them in too hard, they can start to deploy. Yeah. Which is where you get the problem. That's why I like the ones that are part cut on contact, which looks like a two blade standard broadhead. Right. With a rear deployable behind it. That's why I like grave diggers. Grave diggers are the same style setup as the Rage Extremes, mm-hmm. where the whole front portion of the broadhead is a two blade solid broadhead. Right. And then half an inch back is where the actual deployables come out. Right, right. So really, you'd have to sh- jam one of those into the top of your quiver to make it start deploying. Yeah, So I guess. you have to try a couple of them out mm-hmm. see what happens. I guess you really don't find out a couple of these things until something goes wrong and you're like, oh, shit. Right. So mm-hmm. we'll have to see. We'll see. I, like, me, like me, I prefer that type. I either want to do muzzy trocar style setups right. or like either... Grave Diggers or the new Rage Extremes. The Rage Extremes are the ones that really have me interested right now. I've shot Grave Diggers and they they shoot great. See, you're good with explaining this kind of stuff because you can, for some reason, you can list off all these different kinds and types and and styles and this and that from each year. And you have a, 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 like I'm a good memory. With numbers. Yeah, yeah. I'm good with numbers. But you can remember. And I'm like, you know, even if I'm using something for X amount of time long, I, for some reason, I can't. I can't remember all these different names to these different right. Th- right. Well, things. some people are good at that type of shit. Like guys ask me at work all the time. I well, suck at it. Well, what about this this truck or this trailer that you worked on? I could recite the number of the trailer I did two weeks ago. Right. Yeah. You know? No, I don't know how. That's. Yeah, I can't do that at all. Mm-hmm. I'm horrible at it. No, well, some people are good at that type of stuff. Some are not. Yeah. You can draw and do all of that shit, and I pick up a fucking pencil. I'm like, I can write the alphabet. What do you want me to do with this thing? You want <laughs> do some math for you. <laughs> you know, I could draw you a fucking stick figure, you know, whatever. You're artistic. I mean, you 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 drew half of the tattoos that are on me. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? It, it, we both have our different uh, talents. Aspects. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can, I'm more of a visual. Yeah. A visualist. You're a visualist. Me, I'm the mechanical gearhead that can remember numbers and equations and put things together and build thousand horsepower four cylinders and shit. And, yeah. Well. You know, I'm good at that stuff. Um. So back to oh back to his uh, Texas trip. You know, it was getting to a point. I don't know. You just asked if he went to Texas and if they went. Hunting. I wonder. Yeah, no, I wonder if uh, how his if he bought like a temporary license while he was out there or. Who's his brother? You don't think his brother has tags? Hmm. 
I don't know how it works in Texas though with that. Well, he'd have, he'd have to get an out of state resident tag. Yeah. But knowing his brother, and I've met him, and he's not one to not have that type of stuff already. Okay. And being in Texas, it's like, oh, you want a hog tag? They'll, they'll throw you a fucking leaflet full of them. It's like one of those. Uh, <laughs> please kill these motherfuckers, please. <laughs> they'll shoot one at you in those confetti guns. Yeah, yeah. Poof. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> poof, yeah. Got a fucking thousand hog tags everywhere. <laughs> like the t-shirt guns, but they mm. shoot out like little tags to you. What? You want to hunt hogs? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Poof. And if you go on someone's farm, you don't even need a tag. I mean, it, it, it's automatically under like nuisance law. You can just start whacking them like you're fucking Rambo. You know? Uh, yeah. Or you We've do, seen uh, that on, uh, what's the YouTube channel? Lunkers TV, him and them off-duty cops that they, they, they whack hogs and make extra money because they, they uh, give them, that's the pork that the dog food company yeah, in Texas Yeah, and you use. know what? I have to, you know, I have to make another comment on this whole thing because he got a lot of shit from some, he mentioned in another one of his episodes that he got some shit about the hog hunting. Yeah, yeah. YouTube's killing all of those channels. And it's not just YouTube. It's other people that are like, oh, the pigs, the pigs, the pigs. You know, people don't understand. I keep hitting the mic. God damn it. So <clears throat> the people don't understand that, first of all, these these hogs are, are reproducing like fucking wildfire. Mm-hmm. There's, there's tons and tons and tons of them. And the problem with them is that um, they'll go into a, a farmer's land his plot right. and whatever he has planted on there they'll take their tusks their, and dig it all up they're called tusks in yes, technical tusks, terms yeah. i don't know if there's another name that's for fine it. They're, they're um tusks. and what they'll do is they'll go into their field and they'll start digging through all of the dirt uh, everything that they have planted all their dirt everything they have on there and they actually call co- they'll cost these farmers Thousands, 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 and thousands, and thousands. Ten, uh, tens of thousands of dollars mm-hmm. in damage, and it also damages their crops. Right. So they they have to replace it. They lose out on the money, plus the food that that they were going to be yielding from whatever Generating they the did, crops yeah, is gone. Is gone, which actually comes back to you, you fucking vegans, to eat. So it's, technically, they're uh, they're actually going after you guys. So, but you know, people are like, no, you can't shoot them. You should. But the damage that they do. That's why that, you know, a lot of a lot of these farmers bring in other people to hunt like, OK, you want to shoot some come on my property, you know. Yeah, actually, there's a couple of them right now. I mean, you can go down to Texas like you can go on people's farms and actually, I don't think I, I, I've spoke to your uncle about this the one time, you know. Yeah, if they got a farm. They're like, oh, you got a gun. What ammo is it use? And mm-hmm. you go to their property like, no, no, just just bring the gun. <laughs> just bring the You're gun. like, what? I gotta go buy go buy some out. No, no, no. Just, 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 just bring the gun. You got a five, five, six. Next thing you know, this dude drops an ammo locker next to your feet. Like, have fun. See you tomorrow. They'll shoot that out along with the confetti, the yeah, confetti yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bullets. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's true. I mean, you can go out there, and I mean, that's what these guys do. From what I understand, these off-duty cops and stuff to make extra money. Yeah, you know, and you also help out people in the neighborhood. Right, but and you know, and we're also giving uh, the pork to the dog food companies that are there in Texas. So you're. Technically, your dog is getting wild caught organic pork. Yeah, you know for their for their pork cans, whatever. But uh, you know, yeah, like, like the owner of the property was like, "Oh, you 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 got two two three, and you, you're shooting three oh eight. I'll be back in twenty minutes." He goes you know, to Walmart and raids every fucking bullet they have. Get these goddamn hogs off my land. I remember seeing. I don't remember what it, it was on some documentary. I walk. I watch a lot of documentaries on Netflix. They have some pretty good ones out there. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember seeing one. I don't. I really don't remember what it was for or excuse me, uh, which one it was on. And, uh, you might actually realize which one. once I start talking about it, they had these, uh, these guys that go out and what they do is out in Texas, they have these, these huge, um, cages that they set in and they, they put bait in the actual cages right? and they lure all the hogs in there Yeah, and they do trailers of, of hogs, of hogs trailers and trailers. And they, you know, they bring them to the processing places that actually, um, I mean, the slaughter is humane. They, they process all of the hog. They, I mean, they use all of it, mm-hmm. but I remember seeing that they were asking this guy, like how many do per day? And, and, um, do you think you'll ever, they'll ever get low on the population? And I said, they, they go through, even with, um, getting full loads of, like full cages. Right. And I I can't remember how big the cage was. Oh, the, the trailer was like an uh 
a eight by twelve or eight by fifteen trailer, something like that. But uh, he said that he could get full loads all day, and the population is they wouldn't even still, make a dent. Yeah, they they just don't have enough people doing it. Mm-hmm. That there's so many of them out there, and I don't think some people realize the the way some of these things work. They just see, oh, you're killing animals. There's no way that mm-hmm. the population is not dwindling down. But they're not realizing. And they're not doing the research to look into the fact that for every one that you're killing, like it's producing two or three more. So oh, easily. It, they they only have five or five five piglets at least at a time. Yeah. At least. That's the problem. And that's the same thing with um I don't coyotes. Coy- yeah, yes. Coyotes. Well no, coyotes are a little bit different. A lot of the wildlife researchers that study coyotes have realized that coyotes they yelp in a pattern, mm-hmm. like when they're trying to hunt an animal. And what they've, what they've come to believe is going on is that they're yelping as a roll call. Right, right. And if one of them doesn't respond for some reason, the female will like instantly like be ready to breed. Yeah, they have to go into okay. We need to we need to the ranks. refill the rank. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so I mean, you know, a lot talking of talking these... about a predator that reproduces that uh, you know they reproduce like a dog. So you can have. One coyote not respond because maybe somebody whacked that coyote. Right. And 10 come back to take his place. You know, and I have to. So oh, I gotta it, look it's for a predator it. that can reproduce at, at an exponential damn rate. Yeah. And, um, you know, I have to look for it real quick because um, John Dudley, he's actually really good. I know we post up a lot of stuff for him, um, you know, on hunts and whatnot. And because we're talking about this, he did. Um, ah, shit, I can't find it. He posted up another stat, like, kind of around the same thing that we're doing, we're talking about with, uh, with grizzlies and, and whatnot. And, you know, he had the numbers, and I'm trying to get it up. You know, I'm, I'm trying to just ramble on as I'm looking for this. But the fact that uh, you, with all the grizzlies that get hunted, right. it's still, like, a, a minimal percentage of the population. Like, well, it's not... God damn it. I wish I had this number out before I even... Um... Well, the, the, there's a lot of stats that people say right now that are about grizzlies that is completely wrong. You know, you'll have a wildlife experts that say, oh, there's this many grizzlies, so we're going to hand out this many permits. Well, they're not on the ground. They're just observing the area from a helicopter, and they fucking check the little box of how many grizzlies they see and shit. Mm-hmm. And the... Um, the outfitters and whatever that are on the ground are like, you guys are stupid. There's like three times that amount. Yeah. Okay. So here, okay, here it is. So he is talking about black bears. Um. So there's, oh. yeah. I mean, oh, You're like oh. Well, black bear, the black bears are like the, they're the most protested, you know, save the bear population, fucking bear that's out and they're infesting the entire northeast pennsylvania new jersey new york i mean that's why it's, yeah it's, it's ridiculous a, that's why i'm, I'm bringing it up mm-hmm. good sorry <laughs> so <clears throat> yeah i would like another one. Oh okay. yeah today's episode is brought to you by rolling rock we not are a sponsor <laughs> not a sponsor but if you work for them and you have the ability in marketing and you'd like to sponsor us we will gladly not decline so, um, so he posted up, he posts up some interesting facts, which are really cool to read, you know, um, reading is fun, reading is good, more people should do it, because more people should be informed about a lot of facts. So, there's an estimated 900,000 black bears in North America, and only 20,000 black bears are legally harvested in Canada annually. He put the stat down for Canada. So that's only 5% of the population. Mm-hmm. When you look at, when people just look at, oh, 20,000 black bears are, hard, are taken just in Canada. Oh my God, there's so many. But mm-hmm. then if you look at the total population and then you do the percentage and it's only 5%. Yeah. yeah. And then you get, when they um, come out with numbers that over 100,000 uh, nuisance black bear complaints have been made to the government authorities in Canada over the past four years, which is like 65% of the incidents. They, they, they require them to go out and help well, some retard. 
who doesn't see okay the point i'm trying to make is by saying all this is because i don't like to just sit here and blurt out stats but the point i'm trying to make from that is is that people don't understand is that when you have a population that's ever growing and then you cut off the people to control that population right and they don't have a predator above them so you got black bears you know which if you take away the hunters what else is going to be hunting them or taking them down as as much of as in a controlled uh well, then they're going to have to hire professional snipers right. or professional no, but my, hunters to my do the job. My point is is that then people don't realize that the population is going to keep expanding. And then well, you get people that are in neighborhoods that are close by, and they have, um, and this is also, I mean, we speak it out all the time about Jersey with the bear fights in the Going the over road. garbage pails. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People have their garbage pails out front. Um, people have stuff that's left out in there on their property somewhere and once a bear realizes that oh hey this is like a buffet line and i could always go here for food (laughs) they're gonna they're gonna keep coming back and the problem is is that if you have you or your kids in the backyard and a bear is just coming through just because hey i'm hungry and this is the easiest way to get food that's when uh other things start coming in line and i mean especially if you have uh you know, the population ever growing Mm -hmm. and they're running out of food where their natural habitat is and they have to look elsewhere because there's too many of them eating it up. Mm -hmm. They're going to start wandering into the neighborhoods and people don't get it until it actually happens to them. And they're like, oh, I get it. Okay. I take back all the shit I said because I'm fucking retarded. (laughs) So, you know, and it just, it's frustrating. And I know there's a lot of, people out there that are avid hunters and they do their research and they know um, the wilderness and what all the wildlife conservation groups are doing. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and you get all these protesters that they don't, they don't really do their homework on it. And all they see is, you know, uh, Yogi Bear or all the other bear cartoons. So they're like, Oh, I want to hug him. I'm going to put a food bowl out in the back. It'll be like a pet. You know, and it's just unfortunate that some people have to learn the hard way. You know, I just, I don't know. No, I agree. I mean, people are, they're, they're, I don't think they understand is like, hunters always get criticized that hunters, hunting is conservation because one, every tag that we pay for goes towards that effort. Yeah, and I so think I even got when this, you the say on there you guys can't hunt black bears or whatever anymore, now the bear population gets out of control. Now the state has to do something about it. So mm-hmm. now instead of making money on all these fucking tags, because I don't care, I'll buy two black bears tags a year here. Mm-hmm. Chances are, you know, we don't have a huge population of black bears here in South Carolina, but there is an ever growing population of them. Yeah, but I'm not going to be butthurt if I lose $10 a tag and don't see the damn bear. I'd rather the money go to the state's, you know, this uh, the, the DNR, the Department of Natural Resources. Resources, or whatever it was, you know. Yeah, well, every, every state uh, words it a little bit differently. Right. So I'd rather see the money go to them. That's why I don't care that it's going to cost me an extra $35 for, uh, I think it's a year, mm-hmm. for the wild, for us to be able to hunt on wildlife land. Yeah. You know, state-owned land, which is fine with me. I'll I'll gladly give you that money, you know, because I know what it pays for. I know it pays for the the wildlife officers. I know it pays for their vehicles. I know it pays for them to monitor the land. I I, I know all of that shit's included in that money. Right. And then I'm not alone because I, I work alone. I know five or six guys that are freaking hunters. Yeah. And they all do the same thing. I know guys that are buying five turkey tags. But one dude told me, I buy five turkey tags. I know I'm going to get two. Why do you buy five? Same reason I'd buy five. You're Funny. donating. Yeah. You know. That money is going toward actually maintaining all all of the areas that you see that are maintained by, by wildlife parks. Yeah, exactly. The, you know, it's people don't it, it's just funny how um disconnected people have gotten. Right. Well to, that's what to I mean. What really goes on. Is what's gonna happen when instead of getting that money for the tags, now the state has to pay five hundred thousand dollars a year because they're gonna have to pay five pro snipers or some shit Mm -hmm. to go out there and kill these animals repeatedly yeah you know so people think that the population for certain for certain species 
will control itself on its own. Mm -hmm. With us involved in the mixture, with humans involved in areas of the mixture, that uh, it doesn't really work out too well. No, it never does. So, yeah, I don't know. People don't understand that. I mean, it's a law of nature that eventually a species will kill itself off. And humans will. We're fucking the planet up like 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 it's rabbit fire, whatever, you know. Yeah, I know. But you figure we we'd ha- we get a better hobby. There's either <laughs> you know some sort of evolution involved, or they just mess up so bad that they die. Yeah. I mean, one of the if uh, shit, what was it? I, I know because I'm such a fucking nerd. I know this shit. Well, we have one of the biggest extinctions that's ever happened on a pl- on the planet right. was a bacteria that almost wiped itself out. And it was the bacteria that caused the Earth to have its oxygen environment. Well, I know it produced so much oxygen right. that they put po- that bacteria poisoned itself. Hmm. So it's interesting. Mm-hmm. We'll have to get the name of that bacteria. Can't remember that. No, no, I'm not good with scientific <laughs> names. If it's got like 27 fucking syllables, I'm not going to try and remember that. But shit. I mean, the humans, <laughs> the human species, has sent animals into extinction. We have. We have. Know. But yeah, yeah. it's also been from um, just taking over their natural habitat and building yeah. our our cities and shit mm-hmm. in place of where they live. So, I mean, it's not always people, you saying, you know, hunting them down. It's it's also the fact well, that we the, mowed the, down there. Their... Were, there were a lot of groups that no, killed animals saying... in mass because I'm not that was 1,400, 2,000 years ago or more, and they were stupid. Well, yeah, they didn't they didn't have yeah. the knowledge of it then. But right. I'm not saying that with everything. I'm right. just saying that there's also a percentage that it is because of us. It's right. expanding. But there's also a huge percentage of animals that go stink because of fucking cats. Who oh, yell? Yeah. You know, kids in the house. Well, whatever it is, but they're both sleeping. You know, but it's true. <laughs> I mean, take example. All right, uh, just because we have friends that we speak to all the time in Australia. The friends. Right now. Do they know their friends? Are All right, they? Mr. and Mrs. H, your friends. How's that? Are you asking? Now you them? know. It's like asking. No, that wasn't that was asking. I was telling. How's that? How's that? Does that make you feel better? Is that like when you're on the school school yard Can and I you're get like, back to the fucking want, topic? Do you want to be my friend? Okay, I guess. Yeah, I have yeah, nothing exactly. else to do. No, but I mean, Australia has such of a, a problem right now with feral. non well, yeah, non um, feral, not well introduced animals. Animals that weren't originally there. Oh, non, non-native non species. Right, non-natives, right. There you go. So, I mean, I have a problem with camels. Camels are not native to Australia. Water buffalo, not native to Australia. Cats, not native to Australia. Mm-mm. Australia had really no real natural predators until people brought them there. Mm-hmm. And then their, they, their reproduction, they, they got out of fucking hand now. Where it's at a point where you can go in the woods and if you see a cat, you can kill the cat. Why? Because it's a feral cat and the cats are killing everything in sight. Cats are literally, everyone thinks that humans are the most efficient killer on the planet. We're not. We never have been. Have you ever seen a human try and walk into the woods and be as quiet as a cat? No. You know, we can't camouflage ourselves in grass. A cat can like see through that shit, lay on its belly and crawl and you'll never hear a sound. Right. I mean, I think as of right now, six ground dwelling bird species have gone extinct in Australia because of these cats. They're not native to the, to the country. People brought cats there and their population got out of control and now you have these feral cats living in the wild just killing shit for sport. And that's what cats do. Like they find that and it, this is actually also proven with big cats so you're talking like lions and tigers and all of that type of shit. They'll kill an animal, eat a certain section of it, okay I'm full, and leave the rest of that animal there and leave. They could get hungry six hours later. If they really feel like it, they'll whack another animal. They won't go back to eating that original animal they killed. It's been now been laying there for hours. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, fuck, how many people have household cats that the cat kills something and brings it to you? Grandma, my, my grandmother alone, her damn cat, Sam, used to kill shit and be like, oh, look here, mom, thank you. Like, as a gift to my grandmother. used to bring my grandmother dead birds, dead squirrels, dead rats. You know? And you never figure, like, this household cat that was, like, 12 pounds. This cat would have no problem killing a squirrel in seconds. So, you know, but some cats are like that. I mean, obviously, I know most of these facts because I'm not a cat fan. Fuck cats. Uh, Well, obviously, you're not either. 
But yeah, cam. You know what? When you mentioned camel, because that's why I've been looking up real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and uh, you could kill camels in Australia. It it was introduced into Australia a camel to tra- uh, transport um, back and forth through the Australian outback. Because yeah, because the they, they can do it. Yeah, yeah. And then mm-hmm. later it was released and has become feral. Yeah. Fucking feral camels. Feral anyway. camels. Water buffaloes are uh, population, are it destroying water sources because water buffaloes can piss and drink their own urine. They'll pee in fucking lakes and destroy water sources and everything. It's like a big straw. <laughs> fucking disgusting <laughs> many people right now are like uh, uh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know Jesus no God. but it's true i mean the um you know a lot of stuff too i was like i'm not like spouting this stupid shit out of my ass i've literally listened to tons of po- podcasts and read a ton of shit from cam and adam green tree who's there in australia probably australia's most famous hunter he and, takes uh, some beautiful pictures. He really does. He's a fantastic cat. And then, and not the scenery in Australia is absolutely gorgeous too. I mean, uh, well, we don't. Our buddy you, Humbug has showed me several pictures in, of the environment there, and I'm when like, when you're oh, in an shit. area that's not, it doesn't have all this light pollution around it, mm-hmm. you don't actually realize what the sky looks like until then. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, holy shit, there's like all these stars, and it's yeah. Go ask how many kids in the Bronx can see a star at night. <laughs> and when I moved to, when we moved from the city to Orange County, I'm like, oh shit! I got one of those in kindergarten. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was on the plaque. It was gold. They, uh, but I, I was gonna say they also brought rabbits to Australia for hunting yes, purposes. Yes, yes, yes. And I guess they're saying that they're the most destructive of the introduced rabbits animals. burrow. They're rabbits the most burrow underground. And all these people are like, oh look, they're so cuddly and cute. Why can't yeah, you yeah, yeah. a rabbit? But they're yeah, yeah. they're they're fucking everything yeah, up. You'll think a cat a rabbit's cute and cuddly until that fucker digs them two gigantic ass teeth into your finger, and then all of a sudden he becomes a football when you punt his ass across the house. Yeah. The, the okay, the feral cats that mm-hmm. they were they were introduced as domestic cats and have gone wild. Right. And they survive by hunting killing by hunting killing native animals. Right. And uh the dung beetle. Interesting. That probably came over on a boat. That's that's weird. The European honeybee. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's responsible for the highest number of yearly human deaths from wild animals in Australia. A bee. A bee. Well, that's not a, a shock. European honeybee. Water buffaloes. Right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, and are habitat destructive. Right. Which they're saying. Which is what they 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 destroy the water sources. The the minor bird. Uh, it's M Y N A. I'm I'm horrible at pronouncing some things. They uh they're actually it says they aggressively compete with native birds for food nesting and territory. It's it's classified as an invasive pest. Oh, so that means you can kill them too. Yeah. yeah. So is the the red fox. They're found over seventy five percent of Australia. The fox. Well, the fox. I, anywhere the English took over, the fox came with them. Um. The feral horse, which was, I guess, they were descendants of animals that escaped from early European settlers that are now mm-hmm. running around. Running around in the outback, doing their thing. Wow. The house mouse. The common, like, their common, the common mouse. House mouse right? I guess it, you know, jumped on ship. Mm-hmm. Went over and... Uh, Popped itself out of a box and mm-hmm. found another little mouse bitch and had some little mice. Yeah. Wow. The, the fire ant is also... It says that it is contained through areas around the port of Sydney and Brisbane. And millions well, of dollars that's... are spent each year preventing its spreading. Hmm. There's a there's a ton on here. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. I'll have to um you know, I'm gonna have to I don't wanna just sit here and list all of it off because Oh, it's interesting. I mean if you look up the stuff is, for Australia, is, yeah. it's very, very interesting the amount it's, of stuff that got happened. It's insane that you wouldn't actually realize that some of these things were brought over. Well, I mean, our... if if you, even if you look at now, um due to a, or, I know we're getting way off the archery topic, but just bear with us. Yeah, but okay, hold on. Mm-hmm. Bef- I just wanna say something mm-hmm. that we are we our purpose is to talk about archery, but we also like to talk about as far as environmental that deals also with the fact of hunting. Right. So you're the animals and everything else. And honestly, it's, you know, if you, well, if you don't want to listen to anything I got a else, criticism about that the other day. About what do you mean? That I don't give tips on listen. what to do. I've, I've never claimed to be a pro archer. I give you tips on what to do out of my experience. Because and... I'm more inexperienced than you as far right, as Right, but yours. that's what I'm saying. I'm not here saying 
you know, like I know about the whole trick about bear shaft tuning. I don't mm. tell people to do that. Why? Because I'm not a pro. I've never shot in these major tournaments. If you want to learn how to bear shaft shoot, go watch a video from Levi Morgan. Go watch the video from John Dudley. Yeah. They'll show you the trick of five feet away, you know, mark your arrow with a silver Sharpie and you shoot it at the target. Did the Sharpie go left? Did the Sharpie go right? Now you know what fucking helical to put on, put on that arrow because the arrow showed you its natural ten tendency of its direction that it wants to turn by itself. So, But I'm not going to be in that type of position. I'm not that person. I'm, I, I've never claimed to have that, mm -hmm. that much talent. I'm a good shot, yes. Have I shot a deer from a far distance? Yes, I've killed a deer at over 65 yards. No problem. You know, but... Ours is more about the experience of what we're doing, right. not for me to give advice. So if you're expecting advice, 39 episodes in, you're still not really going to get it. I'm having Listen. fun toying with the shit we're doing. Listen, and we said this from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sorry for all the people that are like, yeah, I knew this. Like, yeah, yeah. Why no, are you it's the same for again? you guys. You know, PSA I have for to, everyone else. <laughs> I have to say that we're not here. We never said we're experts. We never said we're teachers. We are here from the perspective of just a husband and wife, just two normal people that live your everyday lives. We have kids. Mm -hmm. We don't, we're not professionals. We're not sponsored. We're not talking f more sided from one product or another. No. We're here talking our normal, like what we thought, what we're doing, our point of view from, from a normal perspective as far as, you know, not professional. We don't do it 24 seven. Um, you know, we include our kids, you know, sometimes weeks we have, we shoot all the time. Sometimes we don't. No, yeah, we absolutely. talk about sales we that we found. Life. Yeah, we talk about sales we found. Mm -hmm. um, you know where you could probably find something cheaper. You know, shit we try out. Your normal stuff. So again, you know, just like Anthony said, if you're looking for expert tips and someone to teach you, to go. Yeah, we started this podcast for fun. Go to people like Dudley, yeah. who does on his Instagram, he does how tos on his podcast and video. He does video of how tos. Right. And this guy's been shooting for a very long time. He has done tournaments, Pro he does Archer. hunting, he does teaching seminars with people individually, and I've seen him do groups. So you know, and he builds all of his bows. He he builds everything they possibly can build. He builds everybody's bows. Him, Andy Stump, Joe Rogan, Cam. Green Tree. Oh, oh, Green yeah, he's tree. doing Adam Green Tree's bow right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. So if you want something on the more of an expert and you, you need specific tips like that, go to people like that. If you are already into the the area and you want a podcast of just two people bullshitting and it's entertainment, then you can listen to us. You can laugh at us. I don't really give a shit. But that's the whole point behind this and you know the whole thing i was going to say about the environment is that we include everything we it's not just okay going to the range shooting and hunting specifically uh you know uh yeah well we try to keep the in-house podcast more and, um, archery based and then the road clip is whatever we feel like no we also do some random topics mm -hmm. on here but you know um the animals and what's going on with the conservation and everything that is included with hunting and hunting is included if you're shooting a bow and you know whether you like it or not you do have to have some kind of knowledge about what is going on today as far as your um, not politics but current events for what's going on wildlife wise you know and and these are the things that we talk about and if you don't like it, then go tune in to someone else. But we're mm -hmm. doing it for fun. We're still going to be doing it. So if you like it, stay. If you don't, fuck off. I don't really give a shit. Right. I mean, that's the, that's the best way I can put it. We're not going to make everyone happy. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing people also have to realize. I mean, we're, we're not out here looking for sponsors. Mm -hmm. We're not. We haven't even sent any emails out to people that say, hey, we're, you know, we're a podcast. Because do I enjoy shit. doing it. Right. Yeah, and also, we want to say what the fuck we want to say. Exactly. You know, we ha I, I have gotten emails about offers of like, hey, we'll send you a product. And uh, as long as we get a positive review. No, thanks. No. Sorry. No, we're not going to guarantee happen a positive. You know, and this is by like companies that have used their stuff and I like their stuff. Don't say their names. On the I'm not. But, it's, it, but that's what it comes down to. It's like I, I've used their stuff before. I like their stuff. I expect I'm probably going to like it. Yeah. But 
at the chance that I don't and I still have to lie and say I do, nah, it's just not going to work. Yeah. No, know? that's not going to. That's why I look for all these damn deals on eBay, on Amazon. If I find them, yeah, you know, like I'm going to snatch tell you about our up. coupons. Right. Well, coupons we found. And hopefully, especially if we find a coupon that's like only a certain time frame, hopefully if you listen to us early enough, you'll catch it. Right. So, but back to the wildlife. I don't even know if you're going to remember what you were going into. Because you were saying, I hate to get off topic. And then that's when I went on my little escapade oh. out we we're talking about feral animals and then we we're talking about oh uh, i wish we had playback yeah i know current. i don't know it's all right god damn it it's okay i did it again you're talking about oh god damn it you the i don't know as soon as you interrupted me it was <laughs> over so it's okay <laughs> That's You're fine. like uh, I hate to get off topic. No, no, it was probably something to do with what we were gonna, what we were talking about. And I'll watch. I'll probably listen to this afterward and be like, "Fuck, oh. I know what it was." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. No, but you, you know, it's a, a lot of these species that are are out there. People don't realize that they're classified as very um, not invasive. They uh, are invasive. No, 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 no. Um, Oh, what's the word? What's the word? What's the word? Uh, shit. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's going to come to me. You sure about that? Yeah. An invasive species. Normally, they go in to destroy shit. Nuisance. Okay. Oh, it's it's an invasive species. Nuisance. I know, but that's the word I was thinking of. They're a nuisance species. Okay. You know, I'm still stuck on the fact of what you were saying. I don't know. <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> anyway, Shit so happens. that's that topic. Um, I would actually, I'll probably actually post some things up on our Instagram, and um, I'll probably do some more reading because now that's got me going on um, areas that the most wildlife has actually been introduced by man and has actually been, uh, it, it's become like a a nuisance species that now we're trying to control. That's an interesting topic. Mm-hmm. We can. What we'll do is on that topic. If I go into a way, way loop on that one, like where it's it's like a whole episode of itself, we'll probably categorize it. N- number. Yeah, because I want to kind of like venture this off a little bit more into more topics than just what we do. But you know at what? The range. If you go hunting, if you go hunting, any people that are, go hunting need to have more knowledge about the area you're hunting and what you're hunting. Right. That is, uh, you know, my take on it. It's uh, a little bit more respect. You have a little bit more knowledge of what you're doing. Um, and, you know, it is also useful to know everything in the area of what you're hunting. Because, you know, if I'm going out there in the middle of the woods, I would like to know everything that would probably, like, you know, come up behind me and maybe maul me. <laughs> I don't want to get, like, a bear paw to the face. Just <laughs> yeah, right, all yeah. of a sudden, like, Hey, it's Yogi. No. Oh fuck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> can't hug that bear. No, 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 I can't hug that bear. No, Mm-mm. not at all. No. So, I know this whole stemmed off from the whole Texas thing. So next weekend, we'll probably get dug on. We'll see where he's at. Um, he keeps ordering shit. Keeps that, ordering shit. I just sent him a bunch of stuff. The one shop fucked up his arrow rest. No, that was Bass Pro Shop. I wasn't gonna mention them, but fuck since em. you did. <laughs> Um, do See, I need to turn proof the... right there that we are not sponsored. I'll, th- I'll throw Did companies under the bus. Did I need to turn bus. the AC off? Does it's too late. Show up on the... No, I don't care. Don't worry. It's fine. Okay. So, they, I guess they fucked up his air arrest. Yes. The one that I had him buy, which was the AAE... Fuck. Hawkeye. There we go. Mm-hmm. You know, um, they put it too close to the riser, which I... Uh, you know, whatever. I'm not there to help him with it. And uh, I gotta shut that off. Okay. You know, they did. They, they put it too close to the riser, and it actually ended up bending one of the fins. So it is what it is. He's swapping out, and it, you know, and granted, the PSE Stinger X does have a very narrow riser, in my opinion, and that's probably one of the reasons why. The fin closest to the uh, the riser bent, 
So, but now he they switched it out for a QAD Hunter. Yeah, but um, my whole thing is, it doesn't matter what kind of riser your bow has. That if you have a a, a tech that's working on your bow properly and knows what he's doing, there is no reason that that should have got bent. Period. No, in the no, first no, place. no, not at all. It, it is what it is. I mean, he he had granted right now he had a full tune done to his bow. Mm. So they. Uh, According to them, the pro shop, they did everything. Like, I sent him a site and everything like that. That's mm-hmm. got three axis adjustment. They installed his new hunter arrow rest, set everything up with the site, did the three hour, uh, three axis adjustment on his site, um, and also installed the peep site that I sent him. Okay, yes, that's right, the packet of the... Uh, yes, the, okay. the whole shit that we sent him. Um, so... And he said he shot it. He said the only thing he noticed was that the pin is not very bright. Mm-hmm. That site has a .010 pin. So it's a very small fiber. Right. Sorry, I keep burping from the beer. Um, but I also included a light. Okay. Well, Dougie's Dougie, and he missed the whole part where I said go buy a battery for the fucking light. Oh. And that'll fix that problem. So now he's like, oh, shit, there, there's a light on here. You know, so now he's going to go get the new watch batteries, whatever, for the light. And then now when he goes to the range, you could turn the light on. The pin will be nice and bright for him right. and stuff like that. So it's good. OK, so, yeah, those are some of the things that we'll go over next week when we have him on. Mm-hmm. And, uh... The only thing I will mention, because he asked me to mention it specifically, oh. and I'm not going to say the name of the shop because actually he didn't tell me the name of the shop. Okay. Which is fine, not to throw them under the bus because they're a, a uh, they're not a big, you know, they're not a, a, a fuck franchise. There we go. They're not, you know, <laughs> Cab- Cabela's or Bass or Gander or none of them. So it's a smaller pro shop. Yes, it's a no, it's your standard Listen, pro shop. When you say pro shop, it's your standard smaller pro shop. Yeah, when it's you an actual say, pro shop. When if it's a franchise, we're actually saying the name. Right. Yeah. So. so. But Everyone to, knows that Bass is not a pro shop. No, Everyone it, knows that. The thing that I don't like and the thing that he didn't like is he wanted a starter bow. And he asked us, what is your opinion out there right now for starter bows? Mm-hmm. What are the top ones? And right now, majority of people are going to say the same two bows on a normal basis. And it's going to be the Infinity from uh, Diamond mm. and the PSE Stinger Rex. A lot of people don't normally include the Hoyt starter bow, which I might be mistaken, but I think it's the Charger, because it's $500. You know, it's not a starter bow price. It's a mid-range bow price. Well, that's what people don't realize when they're, uh, especially with more experienced ones who's moved, that you've moved up in bows and you spent a little bit more money. A starter bow doesn't always mean um, as far as your... Um, FPS and your pounds that oh, you're just, pulling. It's a and... massively adjustable bow is no, no, what a starter bow What is. I'm saying is, let me finish. Okay. <laughs> what I'm saying is that a starter bow also, besides all those stats that people mm-hmm. are looking at, you are also looking at price. So starter means, hey, I would like to get into this, but I'm not completely sure that it's something i'm like i'm gonna continue so oh, yeah. you want something on the cheaper side it's not your until... average starter bow should cost you three hundred dollars right it's rts no 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 just bow i got mine what did i get yours was on clearance and it was a bear no i paid 249 dollars for your bow on clearance and it was a bear bow and i drove home which because we lived five minutes away from the store, mm-hmm. and came back with a sight and arrow wrist and everything. Okay, but still. No, so, but yours bear, was, was two ninety nine normally. Yeah. So bear, you people are also looking at price. You don't want to invest all this money into a bow and then be like, ah, you know what? I really just don't like it. You want to go on the cheaper side. So you know, some of these companies are putting out some of these these bows that are be like, oh, they're starters, but there's so much more money. Mm-hmm. And they just don't understand. They just want to stay with the company. They're like, oh, no. They just want to push this certain company on everyone. But they're, they're not realizing that the company's not gearing toward a lot of the starters. They're gearing toward some of the ones that are, they kind of know what they want. And right. then they, they're just moving up in models is what they're doing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and because uh, I'm one to like to save money. I don't like to just 
spend it. I mean, unless it's our kids, and I'm just like, uh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why is their bank account zeroed out again? But you know, it's uh, a lot of people do that with their uh, kids, though. Yeah, no, they just keep spending like it's going out of style. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh mm-hmm. shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna be on ramen the rest of the week. Yeah, I know. Oh, that's it. Oh, you gotta talk about our our little packets of tea. Okay, yes. Good good point here. (laughs) So you know, a lot of these shops push because I know this is what you're leading into. A lot of these shops push their um, single brand. Yeah, they're single brand. They just want to date one person. They don't want to like pour themselves out all over the place. Which you know they need to be. They need horrible (laughs) fucking analogy. That is a horrible (laughs) analogy. Jesus Christ. But you do. You gotta. You gotta put yourself out there. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I've shot all the other ones. I mean, I've shot the when we when we were went to the uh, the New York uh, the East Northeast Sportsman Show in New York. Yes, yes. I was pumped. I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna be able to shoot the Matthews. You know, Halon. At the time, it wasn't the 32, so it was the Halon Six and the Halon Seven. Right. So I was all pumped. I'm gonna get to shoot those. And oh shit, Hoyt's got the Ronin. Oh man, I'm gonna get to be able to shoot the Defiant 34. This is cool. You know, and I've always shot Brownings, and Browning eventually just got absorbed by PSC. So I just, nat- like I've said a hundred times, I've naturally progressed right to PSC. And I was like pumped about it. But the thing that pissed Doug off about it was that they were like, oh, you should get rid of this PSE. They actually said that to him? Told him flat out. You sh- it, uh, and I, I laughed too because they were like, oh, we got some used models, uh, uh, you know, uh, we can sell. Like this- Fucking Defiance. They wanted to sell Okay, so when you're going to try and classify a beginner bow, you're not even going to try and go right to the charter. You're going to go from Stinger to Defiant. Get the fuck out of here. You're comparing a $1,000 standard MSRP bow compared to a $300 beginner bow? That's what I'm just I know you want to stroke Hoyt up real good. The Defiant is a fucking beast of a goddamn bow, even though now they don't make it anymore because they switched the RX carbons, and I think the... The non-carbon edition of the RX, I think it's called the Hyperforce or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. But the Defiant and the Pro Defiant were two of the best bows. And I've shot both. And they shoot phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Fucking great, great feel in the hand. I I absolutely, even the fact that I've shot PSE, I, you heard me say it when we went to the range. That was the most comfortable grip I've ever had in my big ass fucking lunchbox hands. Yeah, that is sure you did so, it. You know, and it's just... You know, but they were like, oh, you have a PSC. <laughs> His first fucking bow. How about you slow your fucking roll? Let the dude learn what the fuck he's going to do with his first bow. Let him get his first kill with his first bow. He wasn't even know? asking for other ones. No, yeah, but it, 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 it's just that, uh, you know, that, yeah. all of a sudden they sound like this 1970s mafia guy. Like, uh, what are you doing shooting this, bro? <laughs> what the fuck, you know? This is a PSC. This is fucking junk. You know, lube that fucking thing up before you slide down. It's junk. You know Jesus what? They, Christ. Because uh, they just want to sell what's coming out of their That's shop. That's fine, but don't be a dick about it. I mean, he, he, Doug even, and Doug, I love my buddy Doug, but he doesn't, Doug, and you know it too. Doug really doesn't get it when someone's being demeaning. He caught this shit like it was fucking, it was on fire. He was like, this, this dude's putting all my shit down. I hope he's not going back to that pro shop. No, he's probably going to because every, he said everybody else is like super friendly. I don't know if it's maybe just this one bow tech has a hair up his ass and Listen, is a dick. Listen, maybe his, his wife, he caught his wife cheating on him uh, or maybe he hasn't got laid in a while. He was just agitated that one I don't day. know what it was. I, don't, I, I honestly don't care. But don't, Maybe his kid took a shit in his bed. And, yeah, but when you, you know. even know it's the first person's <laughs> bow, you shouldn't knock what they have. Give no. them some advice. You, you know found what? issues with his bow. You're going to fix it. You were all excited. Oh, he's got a nice sight now. It's three axes adjustable. Good. Set the shit up right. Don't set the shit up, charge him, and then talk shit about what the fuck you just set up. Listen, you're an idiot. Even if you're, if he's not a first time shooter, but he likes that bow and that works for him, then who gives a shit? Yeah. Not everyone's gonna like the same thing. Like, listen, even and if you where we go, I mean, Saluda River is awesome group of guys. Ooh, they're Matthews. Horse, they are though. Matthews guys <laughs> to the hill, you know. And he knows what sells the guy that owns the place, and yeah. he's super cool. He loves it. everyone. Says it, you know, the whole place. Like, if you're, fuck, if you're gonna buy a PSC, you buy an Evolve, right? Mm-hmm. You buy anything that it's got an ECS fucking cam on it from PSE because those bows right now from PSE are the shit. 
you know, they were shocked that, you know, like, oh, you know, because you got your Evolve. Yeah. They automatically figured, because I'm the speed junkie, I'm going to go buy the Expedite. Because it's got 90% let off, and mm-hmm. it does 352 feet per second IBO, which is faster than my inertia. Right. And I'm like, ah, no, no I, was, I really wanted to go, go to the Evolve. And they were like, why? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean, why? But you're not like, my Evolve you, 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 you know, you need an Expedite. I'm like, whoa. He's like, your inertia is disgusting. He's like, we can hear that shit. Like, in the back room, it hits so damn hard. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm shooting 300 spine FMJs. I'm shooting 520 grain arrows. They're not light. Yeah. That's why you need an expedite. Then they know, yeah, I want a longer axle to axle. And they're like, expedite's 33. It's bigger. It's got bigger cams in your inertia. So it's technically larger. You know. But, you know, and they've asked me, have you shot the Matthews 30, you know, the Halon 32? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've shot the Matthews Halon 32. But wasn't, when you shot Matthews, wasn't the actual grip for your hand not as comfortable? Yes, that was the only downside I thought of it. I think the extra weight that Matthews had thrown on the bow made the bow extremely solid, super minor vibration on the hand. And this thing had no dampening on it, the one that I shot at the, the, at the, um, the event. So it hadn't, you know, that bow had nothing on it. No vibration dampeners, no mm-hmm. stabilizer. The thing was still dead as nuts in your fucking hand. Right. I mean, and the only thing to me that didn't, that I personally didn't like was the grip. I, like a lot of people sit their bow on that, that meat of your thumb, like right between the fold of your hand and the knuckle on your your thumb? Yeah, right right before that curve line. In between so, your knuckle and in, in between your lifeline is where everyone sits their bow or is supposed that's to. That's the lifeline? Yes, this curved one right here. Yeah, I was just um, calling um, it a curve line. Okay, that's yes, your lifeline? That, that's supposed to be your lifeline, yes. Oh, shit, that's really short. Let's go. Whatever. No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> shit goes on and on and on. I gotta die before you. That shit, I gotta like scuff it up a little no, that's bit. That's not gonna happen. So. <laughs> I told you what's gonna happen. I'm gonna retire. Like, woohoo, freedom, drop dead. <laughs> ah, god damn it! Well, I get to spend all the money. Woo! Yeah, right. There you go. You get the, <laughs> the giant life insurance policy that doesn't fucking exist. But anyway, you know, I can't put my bow there. I can't just from breaking right. this hand. I've dislocated this left thumb twice. So there ain't no putting a bow there because my hand doesn't straighten out. Because you're accident prone. No, those were playing hockey. I haven't broken it since playing hockey when I was younger. Or dislocated. I haven't technically actually broken a bone. I've dislocated shit. But it looks like I have arthritis. My thumb doesn't straighten out. Everyone knows that. (gasps) So I have to put it. I actually have to put the bow on that lifeline section of my hand. Right. And which is fine. It works for me. I've taught myself over the... Fuck, I'm 40, 26 years of shooting. Listen, as long as you don't, don't go start uh, going into... Into your palm. Into your palm. If, yes, you're holding, yes, yes. if you're holding your bow, so it's in the dead center of your palm, and it's you like... You a problem. A, a you're grip, in the wrong spot. You're in the way wrong yes, spot. Yes. you got to readjust that shit. And that's shit. something I would refer to... Uh, Dudley did a whole video on palm position on the riser. He actually drew a Sharpie on his, on his hand to show you. Yes. There's that one, and he actually... Recently, he did one that... For guys who shoot thumb releases, like we would normally shoot, yeah. about the position of the actual roller on the thumb release, where it should be on your thumb, so you can actually shoot with back tension. Yeah, I guess I missed that episode. Probably that's something you need to see. But then again, we have to switch your arrow release right now. Yeah. Because that 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 true fire is way too long, and it's making your back. Well, whatever. We have to get into a different episode with that. But anyway, I mean. You know, and from shooting the Hoyt and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And I personally, I would choose, if I could put the fucking Defiance and the Pro Defiant grip on my Inertia, to me, that would be like the ultimate bow. It would be comfortable in the hand. The Inertia's got a nice wide grip for a fat-ass hand like I have. Right. Um, And especially where I have to position it for me to feel comfortable and not have pain. Because if I put it on that fat meat section of my hand, it smashes a nerve and it's actually severely painful for me to hold the bow that way. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's why I don't do that. Oh, okay. So, um, and so I hold my bow where I'm, I've taught myself where to hold it. So I don't, I'm just, all right, I'm comfortable. I'm good at full draw. Nothing hurts. Everything feels great. So, but if I were to switch to another bow, I'm like, I've held your, uh, your evolve Evolve. before I changed it to your 26 inch draw. It was on 29 when they sent it here. I'm like, Ooh, it's my length. You're like, Hey, look at that. It's already mine. Yeah. It's already set on mine. Yeah. Yeah. And I pulled it back and I'm like. Okay, this grip is slightly narrower than my evol- my inertia, 
Mm-hmm. But if I put it in the same spot, it still feels great. That's fine. <laughs> you know. Sorry, that comment. What? <laughs> what? What did I say? If you put it in the same spot, it still feels, it feels great. great. Yeah, <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no weird word around yeah. that. You know. Um, but no, like, it, like when it came to grip wise, yeah. I, I know how my PSEs shoot. I know that if you don't have an Evolve cam, they could tell you it's seventy five percent let off. They're full of shit. Because my inertia feels like it's going to rip the string out of my fucking hand at all times. Mm-hmm. So, which is fine with me. I'm so used to that because that's what Browning said, bro. Oh, our bows are 60% let off. Yeah, bullshit. Oh, and just for all of you youngins out there, Browning used to make bows. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they currently do not make bows anymore. No, they make guns and knives. Yeah. Insanely good guns. But, God. Uh, you know, Anthony does have a Browning bow. I have a Browning Summit too. Mm-hmm. And the was... cams on those are like itty, itty bitty. Yeah, you <laughs> have no right. idea. That there, there, has crossed my mind of like, I wonder what's the biggest cam I could put on here because I know a couple of years later the cams kept getting no, bigger and bigger. I think you should keep it the way it is. Oh, I'm not touching it. it no, no, no. It's kind no, of no, like it's, it's too sentimental. It's it's way yeah that and it's also you you want to keep it intact of what they're making at the time. It's like if you buy a car for that era, like if you from the 1950s. You don't want to be putting shit on it from... Like, what are you talking about? Like bow ma- numbers matching bow? <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Jesus Christ. You don't want to say like, oh, I could put bigger cams on it. No, keep keep what was originally made. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't plan on changing anything. On that time. But, you know, I understand like the, the point of like some of these places. Like if I were to shoot a Matthews right now, mm-hmm. the Halon thir- the 32 is nice. I would end up probably... Just out of comfort for me, mm-hmm. would end up going with the Halon X, which is a thirty-five inch. Why are you <laughs> smirking? There's a fucking dick joke somewhere in this brain of yours. Yeah. Okay. So you know, I would, I would end up going with a uh, Halon X. Um, but if I weren't, you know, like I, I want to get an Evolve. I want to get a seventy-pound Evolve or whatever. Because you want to be like. Me. Or if I get the seventy-pound Expedite, whatever. Um. <laughs> But What's, if I didn't, it would be it would end up being a pro defiant. What is I the max to. poundage on mine? Sixty. Is it sixty? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I can never pull. I don't ever foresee. You'll be able to get to sixty. 60. You'll. No, you I've been started feeling really at weak. Thirty-two pounds under two years ago, and you're at fifty right now. And on the stinger, you were at fifty-two. We just happened to be like, okay, let me. I did my. Oh yeah, it's ten turns. Fuck it, five turns each bolt. Boom, done. Yeah. You know, and I was like, that should be close to fifty. And when they pulled it, it was like forty-nine point eight. So, which is fine. Yeah, yeah. I kind of miss my my stinger sometimes. Then bring it to the range and shoot the damn thing. Yeah. And then you can be like, fuck this piece of shit. Yeah, I know. That let off. <laughs> I like that. Uh, that that 90... guy at that pro shop is right. Fuck. <laughs> I like that 90% off, man. Yeah, no, I know. But Except I'm the saying, only man. problem is, is that sometimes when you pull an arrow back and you're like, oh, no, I, you need to change something. And sometimes mm-hmm. you like let off on it. Right. I can't do that. With no, the like, like even with my, with my inertia, I know which bows PSE makes. Mm-hmm. That use the same cam as my inertia. Right. I know which exactly majority of them. It's the it's the uh, the decree. Mm-hmm. As the the decree and the inertia are the same exact bow, except the degree is the decree is taller. So if I really wanted to, I can probably take the mods off a of decree, and put them on my bow, and then suddenly have eighty percent let off. Jesus look, Christ, pound! I, dude, I've barely been drinking this one. I've been talking too damn much. Jesus Christ. You let me take over the back half of this podcast, and I've just been running on a rant. You've been liking the back half? The back half, yeah, there we go. So, you know, but but if I were to switch from a PSC, it would probably end up being a Pro Defiant. Like, and I have. I've, I've looked online. Just, just even, like, thoughts of, like, breaking up what we do here on the podcast. And, yes, everything we've been shooting has been PSEs and blah, blah, blah. So I'm the a thought has bitch. Right. But the thought has crossed my mind when I'm looking for more deals like we found with your evolve. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should look up the only other bow I would jump at would be a 70 pound pro defiant. I honestly think that you should you should do something like that because I know you've been looking at you've been see cuz we look at eBay on the deals of like the last year's models because all of a sudden right. when a company comes out with and I know we mentioned this before but a company comes out with their new brand new model Right. And then all of a sudden, it you know their older model becomes like such a lower price yeah. because 
oh, it's last year's model. Who gives a shit? I mean, just because it's well, last there, year. Well, there's not a lot. There are people that are like us that will rock the same bow for five years. And then there's people that are like, oh, the new hotness is out. Mm. Must have new hotness. You know. Well, you know what? The people that mostly listen to us are not the must have the new hotness. They're the must save the new money. I don't yeah, know. Well. That was, that was going to come out a little bit different, but that didn't really work out too well. Okay. So, um, you know, you can, I honestly think that you should, instead of doing an Evolve, if you find a really good deal on a Defiant, go with the, the you know, the Defiant just as a different perspective. Because you already shot it, you know you like it. So it's yeah, not yeah. like you're just... Mm-hmm. Picking a different one because, you know, uh, you know, I, I just don't want to have the same thing. Or, right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I, you know, I've had PSC now and. You've had two of them now. Mm-hmm. I like them. And I know you do. My and so Evolve, do I. That's why I've been setup, stuck in with them. The setup of my Evolve is probably going to stay where it is for a while. The only thing I know I'll probably change is. Um, probably add a second. Uh, a back bar. Yes. Uh, wick sticks. I, I have to say, I really, really like that stabilizer. It is the, the I way want the one. That's weight. A, you know, it's good if I want one now. The weight is set up so nice on the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The stick is the, the main shaft of the stabilizer is, is nothing. It's nothing. All the weight All is that where it on should the be. End. Yeah, yeah. It is yeah. fucking great. It and is so much better for stabilizing compared to my statics are I hate to say it because I really do like Trophy Ridge stuff, but There's the fucking statics are Ridge. garbage compared to that fucking thing. But you know, it's and it, the price was actually really good for them. The same price? No, no, it was ten dollars more than my and the fact twelve that you inch can static. Customize them to a, like a lot of different yeah, black and green. Really yours good. is you know. Um, uh, but you know, I think maybe the only thing I might be adding is maybe um, you know, an extra stabilizer. Um, I might change my arrow rest. I kind of really like the one I have now, but if they come out with a different version, maybe. Well, you've but always, I, I mean, since the beginning, you've liked the True Glow sights and the True Glow arrow rests. You yeah. did really, really well with the updraft, mm-hmm. and you're doing really well with the lock fire. Yeah. I almost, well, you're doing well now that you're not using those micro diameter well even technically you still are using kind of a micro diameter arrow but you're not oh my new fmg yeah those those xp pro right. arrows that you were shooting mm-hmm. i think they were just fucking done because your fmjs all just cluster well no not last range well Holy your last shit. trip you shot like shit i hate to I say was it that all... way but the no, truth. it was over the. No, you don't have to tell me the truth. I told you. You said what's oh. wrong, and I said I'm. Yeah, but it was the things I've like noticed shit. too. I'm like your 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 back arm was completely collapsed. Like I said, like yeah, and for so anyone gotta... who's wondering what back arm collapse means, it's your arm that you're pulling the string back. Your forearm should not be completely laying against your bicep. If you're doing that, one, your draw length is wrong, or your Release that you're using is allowing your hand to go too far back. So, and from the looks of it, the way the Evolve shoots and the string angle and all that stuff for Steph, they were both shot set up for 26 inches, like I've said before. Her hand position with the Evolve is completely different than it was with her Stinger. So, you know, and I I know, like, I'm still, I know. I shouldn't still be saying, oh, I should be getting used to the bow, but I'm still getting used to it because with the you stinger, are still getting used I to realized it. that I got into, I knew where after everything a while, was. everything was. And with this one, the fact that we didn't shoot for two weeks and then I picked it up and I was just, everything was off that day. Yeah, everything so my whole wrong. upper body, I was trying to, you know, I was reading because I know we're kind of like really throwing his name out there, this one around. But John Dudley had just recently put a whole thing out about anchor points. Yes. And I had just recently read it. And I was like, man, that is like just great way to word it. And the way he Oh, the one did you it, shared on Instagram. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And in my head, I was like, okay, let me see how I'm going through the steps as far as where my anchor is. So what I did was, and I, I kind of screwed myself up by doing this, is I looked for where I was positioning my hand first. Mm-hmm. And that screwed 
everything up. So I don't know if maybe my anchor point from the beginning was just completely fucked. Or... No, th there was other things I noticed too that you were doing. Like I was really stretching. Too. No, you weren't. Well, you were I trying like to pull back and your front arm was following you back. Oh. Like I kept watching, like as you try to set, all of a sudden you'd be pulling back farther, your anchor point would shift past the corner of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Your front elbow started either bending more or you started choking your shoulder up into your neck. You need to learn to stay at full skeletal draw. Yeah. Which is the one thing that John always says. Don't hold the bow. I'm really, well, we are swinging off John's nuts today, boy. Yeah, we but, are. <laughs> you know, it, you're supposed to hold the bow skeletally, not muscle-wise. Yeah. So you shouldn't feel the need that you're overcorrecting. You should be able to lock your fucking muscle, not your muscles, your fucking bones in a straight T pattern. Get your elbow nice and high where there's still room and not like, you know. I'm demonstrating it here in the house. Like, it's a few people that fucking see me. Like, you know, but, <laughs> it's, I'm Italian. I'm talking with my fucking hands. So, you know, but, you know, absorb it. You going to take a picture of me now, you wait, fucker? You got to Yeah, because, I mean, you're sitting wait, wait, there like wait, this. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. I got to, uh, for you to follow us on Instagram, you're going to get a little kick out of this one as you, uh, you, you watch us. I want you to demonstrate your full, <laughs> hey, hold on. Demonstrate your full your full scale to draw. You, you should be like that. Like, elbow nice, tight, straight, shoulder down, hand where it's... I'm looking at the fucking camera, but <laughs> I, I should be like this. But you should be, you know, skeletally holding it. Like, if you notice, my shoulder's not tucked up into my neck, which is something you were doing. You were either doing this or you were doing this, which is where this shit was happening, and now she's giving me the finger. <laughs> But you should have the bow skeletally supported, not muscle supported. If you have too much of a bend in your elbow, you're going to be trying to force the. You're, you're trying to do your push and pull too much, and yeah. you know you still want to execute your push and pull. This way, you have your proper follow through and all that shit. But you you have to learn the rhythm of your your support from the right from the get go. Yeah. See, I um. Just I go watch just... everything that fucking knock on archery has made. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just, 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 just do that. watch everything that you he know? has made. <laughs> I know but some but... people are like, oh, you know, in the beginning you guys sounded like you bashed him. No, we're just two shitty fucking people who don't who can't follow anything audio wise. No, listen. And when John started suddenly re releasing his fucking videos, I was like, Oh yeah, this is awesome. Listen, you know? my my problem is is that sometimes with podcasts, especially like if I'm driving to, which right now a lot of um a lot of my listening is in the car. Right. Um, sometimes I'll put it on and, you know, we have their kids at home. So, you know, maybe they'll learn something from listening to this. But, um, you know, and and sometimes with me, I'm a more of a visual person. Oh, so am I. And I was thinking about it one of these days and, uh, you know, it was just random that I was thinking about it. And um, how I said, you know, just to go watch his video, just the way I worded it sounded really bad. It did. Yeah. yeah. But he he really does know his what he's talking about. Um, well, also in the I beginning, when you said that too, because you didn't understand the terminology. That's another thing. If you're very, very new, um, w watching his videos helps you understand everything right. better than just listening to his podcast right off the bat. Because if you go diving into some of these, just listening to them, you will really get lost. And mm -hmm. you Unless know, you're a person who happens to be going to engineering school, then you might understand it. Right. John speaks... At the point of a pro level person, in a lot of cases, like there's some things he'll discuss where it's it's like it sounds like it's super down to earth, mm -hmm. but when he goes into form techniques and the hinge of the elbow and the proper specific muscle you're supposed to use in the back, John goes, the the, the terminology can throw some people off a bit. Yeah, so you know it, it's um I have a a way to really screw up the things that I say and word them wrong, and mm -hmm. that, I think that was one of the the we're both of guilty of that shit. Because yeah. so, even I had a hard time following his podcast in the beginning. And then it was like, oh, all right. The more I kept watching his videos and how yeah. he explained it in the videos, all of a sudden his podcast made complete sense and it was clicking. Yeah. So I just really have to put it out there on record that, you know, I do have a lot of respect for the guy. Um, you know, he knows his shit. He's oh, been there, God. done that Has for a long time. And he knows what he's talking about. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's just if you're someone like me and you're more visual and you're just starting, you don't really know things lingually, like um, the lingo and, and terminology, terminology, 
lingually terminology lingually? Ling- lingo and terminology crammed together lingually lingually okay <laughs> we're making up um, words here <laughs> It's the, the Stephanie Dictionary. You ain't got to worry about foreigners butchering the English language. We're doing it for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, maybe start off with his his videos so you can actually see what he's talking about as he's explaining things. And right. then once you kind of learn everything as you go, you can actually listen to his podcast and be like, oh, yes. Okay. Well, it's the same it. thing I would say. Like, if, if, if you're first buying a bow... Even if you had a pro shop, set your bow up. Mm-hmm. Watch his series that's called Knocked and Ready to Rock. And you will learn, like, oh, my bow has timing marks on it. Oh, okay, so that's how they set up my D-loop. Oh, okay, that's how they set this that's, up. Yeah, and that's actually, that's up. a good point, is that yeah. if you're at a pro shop and they're doing something with your bow and it's not busy, so if you're there and you can actually sit there and watch them... Sit there and watch them as much as you can. Because even though you don't have a bow press at home and you can't do these things at home, mm-hmm. it is still good to learn the ins and outs of your bow and, and what they're doing and how they're setting up. It just helps you learn for the future, even if it's little tweaks that you're doing as far as when um, either your form or how you're shooting. If something goes wrong, you're like, oh, it must be this, this, or this. Or maybe you're out hunting and something breaks, and maybe it's something that you can fix. Right. But you're like, oh, okay, wait, I I saw him doing it this way, and you just kind of learn as you go. And oh yeah. You know, it it, it kind of the more knowledge you have about what you're doing is it it makes a bigger difference on the outcome of certain things. And mm-hmm. you know, we listen to Joe Rogan a lot, and uh, you know, uh, people always mention how he's obsessed. He gets obsessed with the things that he does. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's a good point because a lot of these things take a little bit more discipline uh, to to master. And not even master because some of these hunters that have been hunting for like 30, 40 years still say that they're still learning. They have not mastered it. It never stops. You never fully master something. In my opinion, like the best person that we ever had, that I, I don't think you were at the range with me that day. The day I shot with the father and the son where the son did that slow motion shot of of my bow. I think you were home because you were pregnant. Maybe. Um, and I'm explaining to the father because it was a, it was a father and son shooting, and like I said, he's the one that did the slow motion shot of me shooting. Oh wait, my the, the church group that wanted you? No, to no, come no, 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 not that father and son. No, it was an older father, like a like a 65 year old dad and his like 35 year old son. I wonder if they listen. I wonder how they're doing. Hey, it's just if they listen to us, if you guys know who you are, you went to Gander in in Middletown. Yeah, uh, the one I, I was to helping us, your son, the, the left-handed son, doing. shoot. Yeah. Um, but I was explaining to the father, like, all right, the technique behind the shooting. They had just got their bows two weeks before. Right. They got like a five-minute crash of this is how you shoot. Right. And, um, of course, you know, I'm in there, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to set all my stuff up. I get all my shit and together. And James came back, and he was like, hey, do me a favor. You know, I didn't have a lot of time. It's been busy the last couple of weeks because it was hunting season in New York. And, you know, yeah. typical, you know, everyone who's a hunter, oh, let's go five minutes before we have to go shoot. Yeah. And he's a good fucking tech, too. And yeah, he was and a great if tech. You, you motherfucker, if you're listening to us, send us a goddamn comment because getting Anthony to try and send you a message of just how you're doing is like fucking pulling teeth. Okay. So. Can I, can I finish? Yeah, sorry. I just so, but I mean, helping them. <laughs> Like it, when I was explaining to the to the father of how you know it's all skeletal and this that the mm-hmm. other, and uh, and and then how to do the follow through shot, uh, he he was like, oh, you know, you almost describe this like it's a martial art, right? And I'm like, yeah, well, you can think about it that way because it's muscle memory. You're teaching yourself, you know, it's a specific pattern. You learn to use specific muscles and so on and so forth. And the father was like, excuse me, um, okay, you know, th- this is great for me because I did martial arts for 30 years. I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. I was like, well, you know, shooting bows goes back. I mean, they, they, they have pictures in the, in the pyramids of fucking people with bows and shit. So, right. you know, so this is thousands of year old. That's awesome, you know. And it was something he could relate to the way, you, you know. Of how to do it. And then, I mean, his shot, him and his son, after I explained to them how to, you know, just the general idea of get your feet in the right spot. Start. Oh, my bad. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, that was loud. I'm sorry. That's the guinea in him with his hands. Yeah, that was the hands flying everywhere. Um, 
but it was. And when I got them to do the whole set your feet, stand up straight, mm-hmm. bow to the fucking target, pull back, set your, you know, the whole step process that everyone right. follows. And it was like, okay, and they're at 10 yards. And all of a sudden the father got six arrows in the white circle of the target. He's like, wow. All right, you, do you think I'm going to have to set a second pin for the 20? No. No, just we'll move the target back to 20 and you start firing there because the whole time I'm there, I'm just launching at 30 yards, which was the max length of that uh, that indoor range. Yeah. And it's like, okay, and like, all right, keep an eye on me. I'm at 20 because I'm, I'm a little bit more nervous. Now this is a little, the double the thing. I was like, don't worry about the yardage. Just aim like you were aiming before. Do your step process. And he's right. like, okay. Now his entire six pack of arrows was at the very bottom of the ring. I'm like, all right, so just move it up a tiny bit. I mean, I'm sorry. Move the pin down a very, like, so he's like, oh, yeah, I don't want to move it too much. You do it. All right, so I moved it for him. I broke out my Allen keys, whatever, and I moved it for him. And that was it. The next round, six of them in the white circle. The sun's doing the same exact thing at 20 yards. Right. And they're like, wow, man, it, this is so much better. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, it's all proper form. I was like, you know, if you just keep repeating that process and then, you know, oh, when do you think we should shoot for 30? Not for like a month. <laughs> Come back one to two times for the next month, a week, and then try for 30. Yeah. It's like, because I'll tell you right now, you might get disappointed because you're not going to realize other things are going to get involved. Right now, your pin and your arrow rest are lined up to create that cluster of arrows. He's like, okay, when you go at fall the distances, you might realize, oh, I might have to adjust my arrow rest slightly to the right, slightly to the left, because I'm now my group's over here and so on. I was like, there's a lot of other things that come into play. So make sure you get super comfortable shooting 20 yards first. Right. And he was like, okay, cool. And, you know, I've seen him a couple other times, and and the fall that told me, he's like, yeah, yeah, we noticed that, you know, we had James do an adjustment on the arrows, and sure shit, at 30 yards, we were shooting three inches right. Like, yeah, yeah, he's like, so he moved it over, and he told us just recenter your windage on your 20 yards, and then start shooting for 30 again, right. and then, you know, we'll go from there and stuff. I mean, so, I mean, there's a whole lot of stuff that can be involved. You well, know. yeah, you don't realize until you actually go out to the, the farther distances. Right. But sometimes, you know, you go out to the farther ones and you get so caught up on the, oh, I like how much farther it is. Right. You don't pay attention to, to the of, distance. You just... get sloppy on some of the other aspects. I mean, Well, there's a lot of it. things that will get involved. I mean, you have to learn, and this comes in just target shooting and hunting, everything in general. You have to learn to control your breathing and your heart rate and well, all that stuff. Well, that's where the discipline comes in. Right. Of learning how to actually. But you're not going to get go the discipline through. unless you're putting in reps. If you go to a range once and then decide you're going to go hunting, you're going to fuck up. Yeah, and you got to be careful with that. You got really got to get your time into practice with your bow because you do not want to risk. You want to lower the percentage of chance of of getting a bad shot on an animal because you want to get the fastest kill possible. So the animal's not suffering. That's the whole point of, you know, behind. Well, that's the proficiency of it. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, you know what? If shit happens, shit happens. I mean, you know, if you do everything that you can to prevent it, but something happens along the way and it, you know, you have a bad shot on an animal, then it happens. But you got to put in your time. Like all these people, I remember we've talked about this before. You get all these people that, that come in like a week before hunting season opens and like, oh, I got all this work done to be done on my bow and holy shit, I got to like they go to the range once and like, yeah, sure. I I guess it's set up for it. Well, you it's know, like the, it's... The, we had that happen the one day with that lady that was shooting with us when we were at Gander. We oh, heard her we... husband. They were like there for three hours. She's like, yeah, my my bow's on 60 pounds. And I'm like, first off, that's a 60 pound model. Secondly, there's a big ass gap between the riser uh, limb pocket and the riser. Oh, I thought you were the talking about back the off. guy that I gave the arm guard to. Oh, no, that was a whole him? different situation. Yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah, yeah we've, we, I know we mentioned He should this. have just been given a left-handed bow. Oh, this poor guy, you know, and I'm, I'm, I know we've talked about this in one of our older podcasts, but. Oh, geez, that was probably tw- this guy, 30 episodes ago. Jesus Christ, yeah, it's like a year ago. Mm-hmm. Easily. So, this guy was at the range and his wife um, they've owned guns and whatever else, and she shoots a bow, and he just got a bow, and they did the whole, like, to see the dominant eye and everything like that, and he, he tested out righty. You know, they failed to mention that um, 
they shoot. He shoots a gun presently. Left handed. And he shoots it left handed. You know, maybe if you tell your tech that from the beginning, like, oh, hey, I, you know, I, I shoot guns and I'm, I'm lefty and I'm left dominant, then they, they probably could steer more toward lefty. But just doing the eye test and he went to the right eye and everything went toward being him shooting right handed. Right. So he got a bow and they bought like this, the most expensive bow there and loaded yeah. it, loaded it. I mean, spent all this money. I think she said they spent like $1,000 on everything for his first bow. Mm -hmm. That's A, that's ridiculous to do. Right. I don't give a shit how many guns you own. You're not going to go out there and be like, oh, yeah, I could fucking spend $1,000 on this bow because I know everything else about guns. So I must know everything else about bows. Well, that's what falls back into the, so, into the <laughs> idea of, you know, be recommending a $1,000 bow to a beginner. Yeah. So right there is your first mistake. And mm -hmm. we were watching this guy at the range. You know, I um, this is around the time that I first started because I had an arm guard. Right. And then I stopped hitting my arm, so I wasn't using it anymore. And this guy was hitting his, I mean, within like he black two or three and blue rounds. The hell out of he his looked, forearm. Yeah, he looked like he got a gently kick to the forearm. Gently kick. Because this thing was like black, it, like our kid could took a sharpie to his arm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get it drew his veins so up pretty well. So horrible! I gave it to him. I was like, "No, just take it. Mm -hmm. Like you really need this." And she's like, oh, "I think he's lefty." And his wife is sitting back there, and she's just like, "Oh, I think you're lefty, and you shouldn't be shooting righty." Then where the fuck were you when he was getting set up? Why didn't you open your mouth then? I mean, seriously, you know. Uh, and, I, you know, I really felt bad for this guy because it looked like his wife kind of, you know. No, I think that when we left, they ended up getting, they ended up giving the right-handed bow back and getting the lefty. But still, man, that but was I told, I told him rough. flat, I'm like, hey, you're, de you're destroying your arm because you have no power to hold this bow. I was like, switch to the other side. Yeah. You know, and I still, I still want, I'm curious about if I can shoot lefty because I can I'm, shoot well, a gun I'm not lefty. buying you a fucking left-handed evolve. No, I don't want to. <laughs> just, just clear the air. I think if we, we ever found one that was like ultra super clearance because it was like five years old, like a hundred bucks, you know, hey, I just want to get rid of this fucking thing. Well, I can do that right now. Um, I can find Stinger X's all day long on eBay for like $150 brand new. Maybe. Um, but. Because when Doug said Donna wanted to start shooting, I found him a, a, the purple stiletto model for like a hundred and. I think it ended up selling for $149. How screwed up would that be if I shot better lefty? How fucked up would that be? I will gladly be? take your Evolve. <laughs> you, you're dying <laughs> to take that Evolve. That Evolve God is mine. I got to start all over again. Swapping. I'm like, who wants to trade limbs? <laughs> yeah, right? Well, the thing with me is that I, do, I shoot a gun lefty. I could shoot a gun lefty and I could shoot a gun righty. That's the fucking problem. Mm -hmm. And I can draw and write left and right. But Stephanie right. can't count bullets when she runs out. People make, make, make uh, fun of her. Yeah, the AR-15 that I was shooting. Mm -hmm. I was like, aw. Yeah, I didn't count no, my You were like, what's wrong with the gun? The gun suddenly stopped firing. Me and Chris were like, oh, you're running out of bullets? Oh, shit. Yeah, that, gun was, that, that was a fun gun to fire, yeah. I have to say. Well, Chris knows his shit about guns. Oh, uh, yeah. He's a gun nut. He's he definitely is fantastic at it. Well, he picked up a hobby. And then I remember he. Yeah, the, the 900 horsepower Evo wasn't enough for him. Yeah, I know. He wanted to get into guns, too. Well, he's got several now. Well, hey, whatever. Everyone needs a hobby. So good for him. You know. And actually, uh, but, uh, Emily shoots a bow now, his daughter. Yeah. That's right. Now we're just going to get Chris to start shooting. I think, I think Chris is afraid to start shooting it sometimes. You know what? Maybe we should have him as a guest, too, because his daughter shoots. And see how, see from like a youth point of view of like how they're doing, how they're progressing, what her interests are. If they're really, out. yeah, we should find out more about that. I don't know if he listens to our episode. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. No. He's too good for us. Probably. Probably. <laughs> Damn. I'm gonna have, that's fucked up. You know, I'd say something to him on Facebook, but I got rid of my Facebook account. That's right. Mine will be gone within the next week or so. Mm -mm. What? Mm -mm. Man, you can't. You keep saying that shit, but I keep I've been deleting you scroll. stuff. Like, yeah, I'm gonna delete it. And I see you fucking scrolling through I'm commenting dying to get rid on of shit. That shit. No, but that would be screwed up if I shot better. Like, I, I don't know. Or I, I don't shoot. think you would. You don't think so? No. I I think it was. They funny got those lefty mission bows at the range. Use one. 
Hey, just out of uh, shits and giggles. He'll let I... you do it. You know, the owner of the place will let you do it. It'd oh, like, my God. What are you going to do with a revolver? I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. I'm going to slap my HHA kingpin on that bitch and done, bro. You know, <laughs> it might be the coordination might be there and the accuracy might be there, but I might have to start like a really low poundage because the strength. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't have it. The strength wouldn't be there. You'd be so mad right before we're going to go to the Total Archery Challenge at the switch to lefty. I'd be like, ah. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't do that Time right Time to go back to challenge. 35 pounds on a Stinger X, huh? Sucks, don't it? Fuck you, I'm shooting right. <laughs> taking my ball for that day. No, you know what, though? I liked my Stinger X. I still like my Stinger X. There's yeah, nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. I still like my Browning. It's upgraded. The like first time I geri- shot a deer with that Browning and knocked his ass over. It's a fucking geriatric bow. Yeah, is it what is. It is. That's what my, my Browning is. <laughs> it's like the emoji movies when he knocks over the emoticons. And they're all oh, geriatric. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's my Browning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, we get a post a picture. I, I really Brown can't though. understand. Like, and it still baffles me to this day. It's like you know, I knew when we got the bow. You know, my grandfather knew it went from forty to seventy pounds, and I never, you know, by junior year, I'm that cocky asshole. I'm I fucking locked these limbs down. Yeah, bitch. You know, fucking thing wasn't doing seventy pounds. It was doing seventy eight. Mm. And I'm wondering why. Oh yeah, I'm in the woods, whatever, and I shoot this one deer. I hit that fucker with a. I don't even remember the brand of the broadheads. What did they make back from... then? Was it what wood was it made out of? No, they were aluminum arrows. They were aluminum, <laughs> they were aluminum arrows. They had aluminum. They're actually, matter of fact, they were Easton twenty. This is how long I've been shooting <laughs> fucking uh, uh, Easton's. I've been shooting Easton arrows since I since I started shooting. Man, Easton's been around since forever. Like the, yeah, yeah. The but dawn like, of time. I was shooting double X seventy five game getters in twenty one seventeen. So these fucking things were you know they were no joke. But when I hit that one deer, oh, shit, it was actually in Orange County where I shot him. And uh, Really? You were up in my neck of the woods? Yeah, my, that's where uh, my, my grandparents were already up there. Backstory, he's a city boy. I'm actually upstate. Yes. He came upstate by me. Well, up, it's what they call upstate. It's not upstate. You lived in Orange County. Man, I lived upstate. That's Orange County. It's upstate. Well, it's not upstate. It's so, fucking upstate. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, city I was there upstate. on my grandfather's brother's land and uh i shot that damn deer with that freaking effort with that arrow from that bow and that deer mm-hmm. just fell over and then it got up like what the fuck just hit me <laughs> you know i mean when it, when it fell over i'm like oh, damn it's gonna die on impact and then it stood up and what i'm the like fuck? yeah i was like what the hell and you just see the and the arrow was gone the arrow went right through his ass yeah. And you just see the blood come out of both sides. I'm like, he's going to make it. He's not going to make it far. You know? And it just... And it used to make me laugh. Because even, you know, when... Um, we used to go to everybody's... Uh, on the weekend barbecues. When I worked at the shop in New York. Uh, oh, oh, those people. Right. Yeah, so no, when, I'm not mentioning And they had people. a 3D deer. And when I would thing. shoot this deer with that browning... You know, 20 yards. Yeah. You know, me and um, Di, mm-hmm. we'd practice whatever in the backyard. And you would see the deer rock every time one of my arrows hit it. And they were like, how many pounds is that thing? I'm like, oh, I don't know. Does she listen to us? No. Um, yeah, we have uh, people that we used to hang out with up in New York. And uh, well, uh, her husband was a dick. And uh, I liked his, his wife. But unfortunately, you can't. Whatever. You can't, yeah, I don't know. It's, you know what? I don't know. Is what it is. So, anyway, and it, it ended up that, you know, me and Tim went to the store one day, who was also I worked with, mm-hmm. and we had it checked out. And the guy pulls it down and he goes, how much is it supposed to, both supposed to do? I'm like, ah, it's, you know, that's in the 14. It's supposed to, it was originally supposed to be 70. What's it doing, like 65 now? It does 78. Hmm. Oh. Back then, they, they had a generic. Yeah, it was like a generic number. Apparently, yeah. Browning couldn't judge their fucking poundage for shit well it's good though because so. it was more than what they thought it wasn't like less than what they thought well that means at 17 years old i, I mean you know you gotta estimate that limbs get weaker over time yeah that means that thing was doing over 80 yeah but listen a, a testosterone of a, a surge of a 17 year old at that time testosterone surge yeah like you guys if you wanted to if you had your adrenaline going if you wanted to pull back that shit 
that nothing oh, I have was no problem. nothing was gonna hold you back. Well, I pulled back the hundred older, pound bows. You start getting older, and the levels start going down. You gotta, the levels you start know. going down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta. Yeah. You, it, it, it takes a little bit more to pull back some uh, of those yeah, poundages. Yeah, yeah. I got you. you know, it takes a little bit more work. Mm-hmm. No, but uh, it's. I gotta post up a picture of that browning. We gotta get a nice picture of it. Um, My old bow. Yeah, you don't really use it anymore, but you don't need to. But we we keep it for. You know, I shoot it every special. once in a while, like once every six months. Sometimes or so, I'll they'll take break it out. it out, dust it off, like, throw some arrows through it, and that's it, man. Still has the old school style bungee cord uh, peep sight because yeah. it's cable driven with uh with the thirty five inch string in between the cables with the, the teardrop attachments and shit yeah. like that. It's it's old school as shit. Fucking stories, man. Oh, and um in my uh well, well, ex your, uncle. I mean it took your brother shooting. He was like, Holy <laughs> shit, that thing is fucking disgusting. I'm like My uh my ex uncle that, okay. that used to shoot deer out of the, the He backyard. shot the fucking deer <laughs> with my bow from the kitchen window. <laughs> you gotta explain that story. <laughs> you know? Shoot- we were living okay, in Okay, so right. my my Ex uncle, I should say. Right Your now, aunt is they're, divorced. They're getting. They've gotten divorced. They've been divorced. Um, he he hunts, and uh, it's funny how things work out. Cause you know, I didn't. Shoot. We've actually mentioned this story before. I didn't. Uh, I didn't shoot when I was younger. While he was shooting, and he was around, and now I'm kind of wishing before all that shit went down that I actually shot, cause I probably would have been hunting at such a younger age. I was trying to get. Shut You're up, not getting shut up, back shut up. into that again. No, no, I'm talking about pre you, man. Pre, oh, okay. pre Anthony. So, <clears throat> oh man, there was a life before me. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, God forbid. You know. You yeah, were, exactly. We were in fucking high school. What? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I would have been hunting like in high school era, right. but <clears throat> so he, you know, he always shot a bow, and he would hunt in and up in New York. Their backyard, and this is before they developed that whole fucking shit behind there. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, there was a, uh, it was actually my grandmother's house. There was woods all behind there. So they had deer that would just be strolling, fucking around because there's so many deer all over the place up right. there. And you couldn't, you couldn't go hunting in like certain areas that were close by. So it seemed like they just fucking bred and bred. You would see them all over the place. I remember when I was younger, just seeing them like trotting across the street. I don't give a shit how long this podcast has been going. <laughs> so you would see them like just fucking walking down the goddamn street. They'd be at the lake across the street. I mean, they'd be all over the goddamn place. I remember grandma that oh, had yeah. Bambi for God's sakes. <laughs> she, she had a, a little baby and she's like, Oh yeah. Like you hit fucking Bambi. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So, and uh we uh we, we were there and um i know we, one morning uh me and anthony were still sleeping and uh he came down he's like yo, yo, we lived in up? our one bedroom studio yeah. apartment downstairs so we were kind of like this is when we were moving back from florida to new york to florida and we didn't know what the fuck we were doing yep. so <clears throat> we were in our 20s we were no this is before we moved to florida yeah so what we're you know what we're twenties. That's the time to do all the wrong shit before you have mm-hmm. kids and whatever other things that you have to take care of. So he, I guess he he, he asked to borrow like my early. bow. Yeah, he asked early. to borrow my bow. Went to the range a couple times. Uh, actually bought me the same exact arrows I was using. Uh, you know, just to make sure I had more in case he damaged any. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just came down to one day like. <laughs> Yo, dude, wake up. <laughs> I'm like, what? What? Well, what's the matter? Something wrong? Something, you know, they got five fucking kids. Something wrong with the kids? What's the matter? You got to help me. What? The fuck did you do, Thomas? Shot a deer. Oh, good job. From the kitchen window. You what? <laughs> Yeah, that's right. He shot yeah. it from the kitchen He's like, window. Yeah. yeah. He's, He's granted full legal kill. He had a tag and everything like that. The, 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 parameter, the parameter away from property wasn't exactly correct. It was still on his property. Yeah, I, yeah, see, yeah. The that's thing why is, we had to bring him back into the woods. But the, the problem is... And then splash is, water everywhere to get rid of all the blood. <laughs> but the problem is, is that the property line actually extended back into the woods. So oh, they had two and a half acres straight back. Yeah, so it was... It was still on property, so he was. It was shooting the deer on his own property, and it wasn't a bait and kill because the deer. That's illegal in New York. Yeah, yeah. there's so many deer 
um, does, I should say, does there um, anyway, that bucks would travel in anyway because of the fact that there was a fucking million dough over in that area <laughs> that they would just go through, and it was like a buffet of does. It was like yeah, a, it was. a mm-hmm. pimp with his whores. A pimp with his whores. Oh, <laughs> Strolling man. Strolling down the red light district. Be like, oh, yeah. look at that. Oh, that was Orange dough, County, dough, New York dough, right dough. there. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's the whole thing, it, you know, but it was all legal. I mean, he does have, he did have tags. It was on their own property, for God's yeah. sakes. Mm-hmm. So, but it, it's just, it's just funny, the shit you know, that you think. It's one of them hysterical events in your life that you're like, from where? Yeah. The kitchen yeah. window. Oh. What boat did you use? Yours? God damn it. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that fucker's a bitch to pull back. Yeah, I know that. Thanks. Yeah. It's mine. It's old as shit. Yeah. Mm-mm. So, but um, yeah, I know I'm getting I'm getting marked that it was two hours. Yeah, we're coming up on two, two hours, hours here. Yeah. So, okay, before we go, this is oh. why I have to cut Stephanie off. She just you get on tangents <laughs> and you, you say one word about something. Uh, you got to explain it now. Okay, so then we're gonna talk about our our tuna. Another episode. Yes, we have more episodes to do, honey. <sighs> we're probably gonna do a road clip because I want to mention the tuna thing because it's. We're we're really we're, we're testing out stuff for an overnight hunting event or a hunting trip or if with you're the out for goal a day. with the goal of having less than one a, a one gallon Ziploc bag having less than a one gallon Ziploc bag of garbage to get rid of. Yeah, cuz I don't think people realize that when they And that's one oh, one gallon Ziploc bag for combined two for people. two people. Because when they go out and they look for all this stuff, you're like, yeah, yeah, we got this, this, and this. But then they don't realize the garbage they're going to accumulate. So right. we want, our goal is to fit as much garbage into a small space. So even if you go on, if it's just a day trip or one or two days, like a shorter. An mm-hmm. Yeah, a shorter trip. You want to have the least amount of garbage because, A, you got to carry it around with you. And you got to bring it out. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't want to be trucking around with all this extra weight. Right. And the reason I'm also <laughs> stressing that we're trying to use a one gallon Ziploc bag, obviously it closes, so no smell escaping. Right. You the don't want to attract smell you, blah, other blah, blah. animals. Um, I know I, I'm going to stay away from going off on this tangent because I will continue talking about this. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. Because Stephanie has been fucking up packets of stuff that we've been buying. Oh, it's so good. God. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop talking about okay, right. so. and, um, and I also wanted to match, um, mention our. Fuck. Kalo. Just... Kalo. Ah. So there, it's spelled Q A L O. And uh, I was screwing up the word so much because I'm used to seeing Q U and Aqua, but they're pronounced Kalo. Mm hmm. And uh, yes, we actually rings. looked up the company's videos on YouTube to get the proper pronunciation. Yeah, so according to the company, it's, it's called Kalo. Kalo. Q U Q. God damn Q-A-L-O. it. Q A L O. And uh, you know, I'm. It's a side mention. We got these because um, Anthony of does, Stephanie's paranoia. Well, Anthony does. He works on mechanical parts that you know. If he's, I've mentioned wearing, before that I'm a heavy. Mechanic, yes. a heavy duty mechanic, and you know I'm sorry, but as tight as that thing was on your finger, it could actually rip your finger off. And oh, I'm it not, would have. I'm yeah. not gonna be married to no stop. It, it, it took me <laughs> ten minutes, almost fifteen minutes in the car to get my wedding ring off my finger. Yeah. So you know, I I mentioned the silicone rings because honestly, my whole my whole point behind it is that it doesn't have to be worth a lot to mean a lot. So it could be whatever on our fingers. But as long as the meaning is still there, then that's fine with me. Right. I, you know, I'm not caught up on the the dollar amount on them. Uh-huh. So, <clears throat> you know, I figured we'd share because we've been wearing them for two weeks now. Just about. And mine and, has been um, lasting, which is, and I, you know, like I said, I'm a heavy machinery mechanic, so I deal with diesel fuels, parts cleaners, blah 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 yeah, blah. Yeah, so yours is actually holding up pretty good. It didn't melt or No, no, it hasn't or... expanded. It hasn't <laughs> done anything. So, which is really I was expecting to get especially parts cleaner is yeah. known to seep into o-rings and stuff like that and destroy them. Yeah. So, I was expecting this thing to just automatically expand as soon as parts cleaner hit it. And I do wear gloves at work when we have them in <laughs> stock. Right. But um it has actually yeah, it, for the last Two weeks or so, I mean, I haven't held back 
doing anything I do, I'm not paying attention to that it's that it's there. Yeah, not and going out of your way to make accommodations. For no, you. I'm not. Well, I didn't make accommodate. If you look at my standard wedding ring, my the, the, you can't tell that we have white gold and and regular yellow gold bands on our ring. My ring is but so. Mine beaten. is yeah. Mine's the same way. Well, mine's a lot worse than yours. I know, but my point is, is yeah, that, yeah, you know, it's we didn't go out of so, our way to protect them. Yeah, and mine, you know, mine's actually holding up pretty good. They're very, they're actually pretty comfortable. They're it is light. quite comfortable, yes. Um, and you know, we got matching ones just to to get them. Mm-hmm. But you know, if you are one of the few that do like either the same thing that Anthony does with machinery, or if you're an electrician, yeah. Um, or if you do a lot of outdoors things that might catch on it, mm-hmm. this is actually a really, really good option. And if you're one of those people that don't, it, it doesn't have to cost a lot to actually mean more, then, um, you know, just from wearing them, this is actually a really good option. Well, even if you're in construction or any of that type of stuff, where you're in an industry figure, where you have to work with your hands, yeah, you know, if you're a left-handed person and you're wearing a wedding ring, especially if you're an electrician or a framer guy, when you're sw- and you're lefty and you're swinging that hammer all day with your left hand, your wedding ring is going to destroy your finger. There's a lot of guys oh, that yeah. I know that were in construction that were left-handed that completely had to stop wearing their wedding rings because it was mangling the inside of their finger. Yeah. This is a great option for you in our in our opinion. Like like we keep stressing everybody, we're not sponsored by anything. We bought these from Academy Sports here in Greenville. Paid mm-hmm. full 100% price. They They're weren't not on sale. Either. Yeah, they were like twenty bucks a piece. Yeah. So, but you know, sometimes maybe peace of mind. You know, you still want to wear your wedding ring and stuff like that. Like me, I never, I, I risked it every day at work. Yeah. I you always know, honestly, wore my wedding ring. I wasn't taking it off. I didn't give a shit. I'm married to you, and that I gotta was all that say, matters. I'd rather you have your finger intact than have something safer on your finger than be like, oh no, you have to wear. My husband's called stubby. Oh no, I don't <laughs> think so. So you you know, it's just. People get caught up in too much of the materialistic part of it. I mean, we still have our wedding rings. And it's comfortable when you them. shoot your bow, just so everyone knows that, too. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> since it's the, the hand I hold my bow with. And listen, if they get lost, and if you're out in the middle of nowhere and they get lost for whatever reason, right. you can. it's easily replaceable. Our actual wedding rings are in our, you know, at home for safekeeping. Those won't right. go anywhere. But that was kind of like a side note. I felt like... No, they, these definitely they deserve, deserve a mention. The, uh, yeah, because I mean, if even in like hunting scenarios, whatever, or hiking scenarios, when you're in the wildlife, whatever, you go climbing over shit, rocks, whatever, <laughs> you slip, that ring can get caught on something, oh, grab yeah. and tear your skin wide open. Fuck it, this thing will come apart. Yeah, your ring will. Go you're first. better off losing that twenty dollar ring than up. Oh, gotta get stitches. Yeah, <clears throat> so you'd rather have your finger than a ring. Yeah, n- now it's kind of that we have them. I'm like, wow, I should have got these a while ago. I'm such a fucking dick. Yeah, but I've been whatever. saying it. Yeah, but Who it, we, it might... what was it? Listening to Joe Rogan, they were talking about this. Oh, it's him and John Dudley, and he said that he's like, yeah, I mentioned it to my wife, Joe, Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, my 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 wife would punch me in the face if I yeah 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 <laughs> brought up silicone if, rings. If she, if he ever brought up silicone rings, his wife would punch him in the face. <laughs> he's a funny fucking. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, he is a comedian. Yes, and he does very well at it. <laughs> All right, yeah, I can see you're 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 over it. Well, over what? <laughs> I can keep talking. I know you for, can. Like, these things the... have become <laughs> fucking. These podcasts you have become like a wide open field for you. Hey, that makes me sound so. No, easy. it's true. No, 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 not that easy. No, no, for me you are. Anyway, well, yeah. Um. No, no, you. We've both grown to enjoy doing these and talking. Yeah, this is yeah. like our our nice, fun husband and wife activity together, and the fact that people listen is kind of fucking cool. And look at that—we started. You're like, what are we go talk about. I'm like, yeah, we'll figure yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah. Two watch. hours later, just watch. You know, Please. and you know, and also big thanks to everyone that does listen. We have been reaching a lot of different countries, which is really, really mind blowing in itself. When you have people oh. commenting from Russia, <laughs> people commenting from Mexico, from Canada, from Finland, from Norway, Estonia, Germany, Portugal, Japan, uh, Indonesia. Um, these are all off the top of my head. I know oh, Australia, New Zealand. Fire. No, like there's been a lot of really cool, like the fact that we're, we're not just like localized because we lived in New York and lived in, yeah, live in South Carolina, that 
we have people in other countries listening to us. Yeah. Thank Which you for really even cool. taking your time for listening to us. That's really, really cool. And people just don't understand how cool that is that people thousands, not local hundreds, fucking thousands of miles away are actually taking time to listen to a husband and wife have fun and talk about stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's actually really cool. Mm-hmm. And uh, here's a test. <clears throat> I'll see if you listen to oh. the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> if Humbug actually listened to the whole thing, because this one's a long one, if he actually got to this point, because this is the, the end, I want to do another live show, God damn it! So we need to do one like weekly. You need to do your normal he's, one weekly. He's and then got us one weekly. scheduled for right now. No, us. He needs to do like us, and then his other one. So he needs to do like <laughs> two or three. You a have week. to wait your turn, woman. <laughs> My God. But it's fun. I like talking. He already to has one set up. I think this one, next one he's doing. And go check out the Humbug <sighs> show. He's very good. And I mean, well, we've mentioned him before. He knows his shit. He knows his shit. Very good about finding resources about the information he's presenting and stuff like that. Um, also, there's Heather from the Power Sunshine, Sunshine and Power Cuts podcast, who, if you're interested in nature experiences and also she does episodes about living off grid go check that one out you know I like i like live shows you want to laugh and hear guys ridicule movies go check out nick and the boys at the epic film guys podcast they're funny as hell um nick also and this is just to mention a bunch of people that i listen to and who are also part of the group that were that i'm involved in that help us do the podcast stuff um mm-hmm. nick also does one about food it's called restaurant Really? Yes, it's the man will make you hungry just by the way he talks. Really? He is insanely passionate about food, unless it's Outback. It, wait, I'm if sorry. If it's it Outback, he absolutely that. fucking butchers them. <laughs> the guy who did the Instagram po- post of the, the people taking a picture of their food, and right as the smush. flash goes off, he like smushes smush. their food. <laughs> yeah, he smushes smush. their food. What I'll the fuck, to, bro? I'll have to get the link. I'll have to yeah. post it up there. But, but he smushes their food right before they take Who's the other one? They get so pissed off. They're like, no. There's another husband and wife group It's called that I listen to, which is actually quite funny <laughs> when they do it together. It's called uh, Mom and Dad Cuss a Little. That's uh, a funny one. But the husband know. also does his own podcast called odd dad out which i find funny he's actually the one who had uh originally spoke about the antler restaurant and the protest that the vegans oh, were doing okay, okay that's okay. the one that brought it to my attention which okay. and, and he's a funny dude um so yeah just go check out a bunch of other podcasts it doesn't have to just be archery go you know we we stress that type of shit all the time i don't expand your horizons yeah yeah and that's just a couple that i can mention off the top of my head obviously always got to reference bandrew because he's the one who helped me along the way with all this musical gear and yeah, because microphone I am stuff and zero help. So yeah. he has helped a he's, lot. He's uh he's got his YouTube channel if you want to learn about microphones, podcastage, and then uh his podcast called The Bandrew Says Podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So and that's just to mention a few people. You know. I'm trying to think. About what? No, oh, anyone else to mention that we listen to? That aren't like huge names. Yeah, the everyone well, everyone that I mentioned is all indie stuff. Oh, uh, what's the other one? Emily's podcast. Oh shit. Oh, oh the I story thought, behind. I thought you were gonna mention the Legion of Skanks. Those dudes are fucked up. <laughs> I'm sorry. The first one that I end up listening to after they're on Joe Rogan's podcast. Ooh. Uh when they decide, let's talk to the interns. And the girl did gymnastics as a teenager. Don't even go into it. People have to listen to yeah, it. Yeah, you have to go listen to that. It just, it just, it, it, just look yeah, for the one that's his don't. balance beam. It's fucking great. You can probably um, already figure it out. But yes, no, there's I'm another sorry. woman named Emily. Uh, Actually, Emily, I, Emily oh, because I know I think Andreas listens to our stuff, right? Yes. He would, you would like that the legion of skanks guys the legion of skanks they you are on their level of uh but right now humor. the last couple like half the show has been about a music contest they're doing that jamie josta was involved in being a judge the guy the singer from hatebreed okay. so, but the even the one with the balance beam just listen to the first half once they start getting into the music shit you could shut it off there but the first part is absolute fucking genius i was hysterical laughing while i'm at work uh, <laughs> and, I, and at this, uh, this is a point where like it was a bad day yeah. where 
I'm listening to the podcast with headphones on because I wasn't going to answer the phone. I wasn't talking to drivers. It was <laughs> fuck, fuck the guys. world. <laughs> fuck I am plugged in and that's all. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, like I said, there's the other one, um, Emily. Uh, I think her name's Proco. I keep forgetting her last name. But she does this podcast called The Story Behind. And it's all like 10-minute segments. Like she did a 10-minute segment about Legos, a 10-minute segment on the, t- the history of tattoos. Legos? And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. about the whole history of the company and where they came from and the two people, two companies or whatever that joined together. And Basically, her, her podcasts are 10-minute trivia mm-hmm. bites. Like, oh, you have trivia knowledge. Here, 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 here. And, you know, a bunch oh, okay. of different stuff. So it's really cool. Um, Yeah, and that, that's about all I have for right now. Okay. I still have more stuff to talk about, but I'll save that's it. That's on the next episode. I'll save it. It'll probably be in a row. Mm-hmm. Well, no, tomorrow's Monday, so we're not shooting tomorrow. Because the brain just closed tomorrow. No. But no. we still got to find an outdoor range for the yardage. Yes. and Or some place that will allow us to shoot and set up our own targets and right. and shoot outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. But yeah. Okay. I, okay, I got to... I'm not done, but... Okay, I next episode gotta... will be coming. <laughs> so we'll probably have a road clip or two this week. And then our normally scheduled podcast will get released sometime uh, Sunday night into Monday morning, like always. We will see everyone next week. Yes. Remember, go out, shoot another bow, try it. If you're a pro shop guy, don't degrade someone's stuff when they're just learning. Don't be a dickhead. PSC's better, though. What? Who said that? (laughs) Everybody, have fun. Go out. Go shoot.